ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you're there, we are about to get started. We are about to get started, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are doing the countdown starting in approximately five minutes. Approximately five minutes. <laughs>
APIP I have a pro I have an iPad Oh uh, iPad Pro I have a pencil I have an Apple Oh uh, Apple pencil iPad Pro Apple pencil Oh uh, Apple pencil iPad Pro Apple Pencil iPad Pro Okay everybody, everybody, I am here you are all here. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Let's get hyped up because you know what time it is. It is time for BTZ's live stream. This is our pre-show. This is kind of like our hangout where we can kind of talk about what we expect to see, all the things that we want to see coming, all the things that you might see, you might not see. So we're going to kind of get through some orders of business. First of all, if you look on the graphic, where is it? Is it here? Is it here? Yeah, it's here right now. Okay, so this is how you be a part of this show. All you got to do is call in. The number is 844-811-9561. We have 10 phone lines open, and uh, eight of them are already full. So this is where you guys and gals can interact with the show because I'm so thankful you're all here. This is just, again, a fun way for us to get started. But we also have some other cool ways for you to participate and be a part of this because this is like a uber engagement type of thing, a shingam, shingamadiga thing, a big jigga. And I see you all in the in the chat just crushing it right now. So we will, we will get to that. Um, first of all, if you look at the description in this video, you can see there's a couple links that I want you to be a part of. This is a fun one. We're going to touch upon this really soon, but we have our pre-show poll. So what that is, is that allows me to kind of get a pulse of what you are all thinking. The link is down in the description, and it's about maybe... 15 questions or so because it's apple event time and you know that we get hurt i don't know it's always exciting when i see like the chat kind of going do 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 and you hear the music and everything's going like i get a little giddy i'm not gonna lie so um this is how you can be a part of it we're gonna touch upon what your responses are what you expect to see and all those things specific features you're looking for have you waited for air tags long enough are we gonna call them air tags or when we see them are we gonna call them air lags we'll find out all right also another part Another way to participate and actually like reward you for your time. I mean, I'm not trying to like, uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not trying to. Uh, what's the word? I'm not beg you, but try and like you know get you to stick around. But you, I do want you to stick around. We also have our big bingo card. So I'm going to show you how to how to partake in this. There's a link that says Big Bingo. We always play Big Bingo here. It started long ago. You know, some other places might have adapted that, adapted, or were inspired by that. Not that Bingo's original, but for the Apple Keynote, it is. So check out the link. I believe it's a tiny URL slash Apple Spring. You can see it down on the bottom. And um, what it does is it takes you to this site. And from the site, you can see, hey, it's Apple Spring Load Event Big Bingo Card. And what all I need to do is I hear I click on Generate Card. Okay. And when I generate the card, it will randomly put this all in one spot. So you got fun things like, okay, we got the iPad mini, we got AirPods, maybe we'll see the Magic Keyboard make an appearance. Okay, I've looked at the past three keynotes, and Tim Cook, in his keynotes, the last two, he said, hello and welcome back. We've got this in the spot. Or three keynotes ago, he said, good morning and welcome. So all you have to do, whether you're on your phone, whether you're on your laptop or your computer or tablet, once you pull this card up, you, you click the spots as they happen, during the keynote. Not during the pre-show, during the keynote. Okay? Okay, use your noggin, all right? So once you get five in a row, I'm not looking enough for blackout because everyone's going to get blackout. Once you get five in a row, all you have to do is tweet me at Brian Tong. Send that along, and I got some goodies. I got some goodies. So, you know, companies send me some stuff once in a while. So we have three things here. We got these killer cases from Razer. These are this is not a sponsorship, by the way. Okay, so we've got their Arctech Pro hard cases for uh, 5.4 inch iPhone 6.1 and 6.7. These are for the current iPhone uh, 12 batch lineup. Okay, so we got those to give out, um, and then 
one of y'all are gonna get lucky. I got this Cove like Bluetooth speaker where you twist it in half. It's a Bluetooth speaker, and it it's either good for like on the beach or on the go, or you could put it the two speakers when you twist them and pop them in two separate places. So if you partake in BTZ's big bingo card, that is another way you can win. Okay, so very cool. You got the poll that I want you to do. We got BTZ's big bingo card that I want you to do, and I want you to call in. So I think that you all don't like to just wait around for me to keep on talking. I say, like, let's get to the calls. We got plenty of things to talk about. The keynote itself is starting at 10 a.m. Pacific time, so that's in roughly an hour and 11 minutes if my math is correct with my eyeballs. So we're going to do that. So let's give me a moment to pull up our first call. This gentleman called before the keynote even started. Oh, yeah, also, I forgot to tell you. We got we, we got the sky cam, or is it the bright cam or the sky cam? Hi, hi, mama. I hope my mom's watching. Like, honestly, sometimes my mom watches a lot. I don't know if she's watching right now. So, mom, if you are, uh, text me, then I know. Like, I'll really know. Okay, so let's get to our first call here. We've got my man, and help me out also, if the audio for you at home listening is a little hot, I'm obviously doing everything. I'm switching cameras. I'm mixing the audio. So let me know what you need me to kind of tweak. I'll try and pay attention to it in the chat. But my first friend of the show, first caller today, Mr. Samuel Cole from Austin, Texas. Samuel, welcome to the show. What's up, my man? Howdy, howdy. How, howdy, y'all. How you doing out there? Uh, good. Uh, the heat's coming up, so it's about to you know, get that time where it's just 100 degrees every day next month. That's delightful. Absolutely. So, uh, Samuel, what would you like to talk about here? You know, it's Apple event, the first event of the freaking year, which is kind of crazy and exciting. We've been waiting for a lot of things. What do you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, so, you know, the big focus is obviously iPads. Uh, I don't really care that much about the iPad because, to me, the only thing they have to do is put the webcam in the right place this time. Uh, I don't know if you've done a video call on an iPad Pro. <laughs> Not fun. It's, it's off to the side, which is wrong. Uh, but to me, like, uh, I, I think the last time I called on the show I talked about this was I, I am desperate for a new Apple TV. Ooh, yeah. Like, uh, uh, the old one is just getting very long in the tooth. Um like my wish list is obviously they need to drop the price, not to like a hundred dollars. I don't think they're going to do that, but like to one fifty, which is what the uh, the Nvidia Shield TV costs. Mm -hmm. So you know they're at least you know have price parity. But they also need to like you know like they, Apple talks about their AI stuff a lot. Um, the rumor is they're going to put an A12Z in it. Or, uh, so if they do that, you know they have that neural engine. Why not you know use that neural engine to make 4K TV. Uh, sorry, HD TV shows look better, which is what the Shield TV does, which is why people are willing to pay 50 bucks for that thing over a Roku. Uh, I don't really care about gaming because, you know, there's there's already a very popular um, ARM gaming platform that uh, people make games for. It's called the Nintendo Switch. The reason that Apple doesn't get games on the Apple TV is not because it is not powerful enough. The Apple TV, the current one, will run circles around a Nintendo Switch. Uh, people don't develop for it because Apple is just bad for game developers and they don't really care about being a good partner for game developers. So like, they, they can make that thing as strong as they want, in my opinion. I just don't really think uh, it's going to matter how much horsepower they put into it unless they change the way they fundamentally operate as a company. What do you think about, you know, we talk about gaming, but you want the new Apple TV but what is the singular feature that matters the most for you? Because for me personally, I have an uh, Apple TV 4K. I want to see a new one. Will a processor help? Absolutely. Do I care about you know rumored 120 hertz refresh rate? Well, that will make things look nice on my screen. But am I going to be, with all of the things out there that are competing for my time, in addition to the fact that we just got brand new next-gen consoles just well, almost six months ago, it's hard for me to think that... Um, I'll like a new Apple TV, but will I really need one? And is even something like putting a U1 chip and find my for the remote, which would be nice. Don't get me wrong. Is that enough to really make me care about the Apple TV? Like, what is it for you? So I think it depends where your interests lie. Like if you're the majority of consumers, I don't think the majority of people should buy an Apple TV. I think they should get a Roku Ultra or a Google Chromecast TV with Google TV. 
Um, those are the two, you know, they're, they're way cheaper. They offer what most people care about. But if you're a big home theater nerd, which I am, uh, a new Apple TV can do things like 10-bit HDR, which means nothing to almost every single person watching this live stream, so I will not explain <laughs> it. But, yeah, like 10 to 10-bit 10 HDR Dolby Vision would be a very big improvement. Agreed, agreed. Uh, it would, for instance... It would be it, it would make it so the Apple TV is actually the best device to watch Apple TV Plus originals on, which is very weird. Like if I want my picture to look best when I'm watching For All Mankind, I actually don't use the Apple TV box. I will use the built-in app on my LG OLED because mm -hmm. that gets the best uh, the best picture quality. Uh, so if they put you know they put 10 bit on that thing, oh, if they sorry I was playing Fall Guys. Uh, they put 10 bit no, on that hold thing. Up, hold then up, hold for up, a lot hold of up. You're playing Fall Guys while you're talking to me on the show, bro? Is this true? <laughs> Samuel, do I have Yes. Samuel, you know what I you know what that is, right? That's a bad apple. Samuel, I thought we were <laughs> friends. I thought we were friends, man. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um I'm going to I, I appreciate you calling. No, I'm not. I'm not even mad. I'm just messing with you, buddy. Um, this is cool, though. But yeah, I agree. You know, those tweaks, if you want higher fidelity video, we do need a little boost and bump and we'll see what happens. I don't know if we're going to actually see an Apple TV or not. Uh, we, we know the invite is called spring loaded. And so we will see how loaded it actually is. But thanks so much for calling Samuel. And uh, uh, did you, how many times you've been playing Fall Guys? Like, did you, how far did you get? Are you like round five, top 10? Where are you at? Oh, I've won a bunch. No, no, uh, I'm talking about right now yeah. because if you're playing Fall Guys while you're talking to me, you better kick some ass. Yeah, no, I got to I got to Fall Mountain and almost almost got it. Yeah, you don't deserve to with that that was that was just unacceptable, my man. I'm just kidding. All right, hey, thanks for calling, Samuel. <laughs> Have fun. All right, thank you. Okay, everybody. So Samuel calling in the house uh, again. You can see the number down below. That is how you get to me. Some people were complaining that my audio was a little too low. Hopefully. I turned up my audio to boost it a little bit better. If that helps, let me know. Um, but, you know, I can always kind of tweak this throughout. I do want to touch upon a couple other things. We're going we're gonna to go visit the uh, poll that I talked to you guys about, the Apple Spring Loaded Event pre-show poll. This is where we want to find out what you're all doing. We got 186 responses so far. I'm going to wait till we have 200. So we just have a nice, uh, a good amount of statistics, you know, a good amount of entries that make it at least more accurate. I mean, I remember one time back in the day, uh, we had like reporters that said, oh, um, I don't want to call his name out. But when Apple rumors were really hot, he interviewed 37 people on the street and then reported what their findings were. And that resulted in how many people were going to upgrade the iPhone. 37 people. We don't do that here. We got to hit at least two honey. So we're at 187. Keep on filling that pre-show pre -show poll out. Um, again, I do want to stop for a moment. I'm not going to linger on this, but I got to also let you all know that all of my content, right? I'm a completely 100 independent. So patreon.com slash Brian Tong. This is how people can support my content. Now, this is what you get when you do that. It starts at $2 per month. We got $5, which is basically like a cup of coffee per month, but I get you early access to most of my content. Most of it, like 95% of the content. We do bonuses at different levels and then a completely ad-free version of a podcast. And with that weekly podcast, the Apple Bits XL, you're also you know, getting that early access as well, but no ads whatsoever. All of that goes into supporting what I do. And you know, I will call out when I have a chance, when I see people that put in the uh, Super Chat contributions. Thank you so much. Like we indie, this is how we do it. And I appreciate all of you who have stuck with me, who are coming out here. How many strong How many strong we got here? We almost are going 2,000 strong before the freaking keynote. Y'all are crazy. Uh, shout out to Ego Geeker Gur for their $19.99 contribution. I think I saw Shamar throw out a 20. Uh, thank you so much. Let's get to the calls now. You all know how to do it. We are going to keep on going. And again, once we hit 200 responses, we're getting there to the pre-show poll, which the link is in the description. We're going to see what you all think about what's happening here at the keynote. All right. So let's go to my friends, our next caller. It looks like we have Mark calling from the 306. Mark, if you're there, what's up? Welcome to the show. Hello, Brian. Yes. How are you? I'm doing great. Is this Mark? Did the yes. call screener get you right? Wow, that's two of two. This is very rare. The call screener normally messes it up, but I'm glad. So thanks for joining us. Uh, happy 420, Mark. 
Yes, I'm Stasis from Greece, and I'm calling you through Viber. That's why you see the strange number there. This is amazing. Calling from Greece, a uh, home of one of my favorite players, Yanis. Yanis. Aneta Kumbo. Yanis. Yeah. How are you, Brian? Are you loaded? <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> even if I was, I wouldn't be able to tell you all that. But I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready, and I'm rolling for today. So, what, what are you hoping to see? What are you most excited about for this keynote? Uh, uh, yeah, me being so loaded, I'm hoping to see <laughs> colors in IMAX. Oh yeah, <laughs> you mean, know this event. Yep. Yeah, that's... I think uh, last year when they announced the iPad there, that was very colorful, and I really enjoyed the colors there, and. Um, uh, I really hope to see them uh, this year in, in the Mac, and I, I think the the event, uh, the logo has a hint there. Do you, don't you think? Oh, I mean, there's al there's always hints in the logo. It just depends on what you want to lean into, right? So, what is your? Yeah. What, but what you have you a think? gift. You are Nostradamus, so you know what's going on. Man, you call me Nostradamus. People that know, I mean, Nostradamus, you got to be old school to know, you know, Nostradamus. You know that yeah. <laughs> I do have special abilities. Um, I was born telepathetic, okay? And I also have ESPN. Yeah. <laughs> so both of those, I'm very good. I'm very good with the, with the mind stuff, my friend. <laughs> That's true. So do you think that we're going to see the colorful IMAX? I'm, you know what? So what happened is earlier before before everything, I think that... It didn't seem like we were going to, and then some of the leakers mm -hmm. have kind of softened on that stance. Um, I'm friends with John Prosser. He was just recently on my podcast, and I think that, you know, we – how about this? The chances are higher than they were before. I would say maybe a week ago most people were saying, like, no, it's not going to happen. But I think now people are leaning more towards, like, I, you know – so you're telling me there's a chance. If you watch Dumb and Dumber, we're talking about more like maybe a 50% chance. And I'm not trying to hype it up, but, you know, everyone's been waiting for this iMac. And so we will, it'll be very curious to see if we see it. I hope we see it. I think that would be the thing that puts everyone over the top because quite honestly, we know that iPad Pros are coming. We know that AirTags are most likely coming. If it is really spring loaded, what is that third thing that's going to really take us over the top to be spring loaded so um we'll see i, I honestly don't 100 percent know everyone i've talked to 100 percent does not know if they're really coming or not so i don't know i would lean towards them maybe saving it for a little later but we'll see i i'm nice. that's why we're all here that's why we got two thousand people watching because not only do we want to talk about this stuff we we want to see what happens so we'll find out yes and also what if uh we see Colorful air, air tags. Wouldn't be this awful? <laughs> you know, we are loading this event for air tags that we wait uh, since 2019. <laughs> hey. That's a bad apple. Hey, wait, say it, say it again really nicely. I want to hear it so the people hear it. That's a I mean, bad apple. About, uh, if, if, ah, that's a bad apple. Thank you. Thank you. I know there's a delay. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> But uh, hey, Mark, yeah. my friend, sorry, sorry, uh, okay. I wanted to thank you so much for calling from Greece. Uh, I love how we got like yeah, an international flavor on this show. Um, so thank you for following, and I, I really appreciate it a lot. Okay, Brian. All Keep right. up the good work. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Okay, everybody. So let's go. Um, I got to give a shout out to, look, I am paying attention to the chat. Looks like Margot Robinson just contributed 20 bucks to uh, this live stream on the Super Chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is amazing. I, I'm telling you all, like, I am watching this stuff. If if you didn't think I was low, like, my brain has started to learn how to fire on, like, a different level when you're just kind of, like, producing and doing all this stuff. It's, it's kind of wild, but it is actually fun. It gets me juice. So let's go to our next call here. Let's see if we got it, and uh, we will then revisit our poll. Let's go to our friend, if we got this right, Corbin from the 850. Corbin, are you there? Welcome to the show. Yo, Brian, what's up? Spring loaded. Are you hype? Are you hype? Let's get loaded. Okay, not not yeah. like I mean, let not let's not get out of hand. But <laughs> Corbin, did they get your name right, my friend? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man, I love it. So where are you calling from? Uh, Tallahassee, Florida. Tallahassee, Florida. Welcome, welcome to the show. I know it's a. I guess you're kind of ramping up for like a little lunchtime action to to watch this keynote and everything. What what are you hoping to see and what do you want to talk about today? 
Well, I was just filling out your um, pre-show poll. Um, I am excited for the air tags. Mm-hmm. And like you said, like you said, these things have been rumored for two years, and I love that name, Air Lag. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, let's go, let's awesome. go. You know. <laughs> so for you personally, oh, yeah. um, what I, what would you? How do air tags fit in your ethos? Fit into your world? Because for some people, they're like, ah, I don't know, but. I would, I'm surprised because a lot more people are still excited about these, even though they're frustrated with waiting, than, than I anticipated, quite honestly. So where are you at with this? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm planning to pick up like two or three of them. And, uh, you know, I thought of an idea that I don't think anybody's considered before. I have drones, mm-hmm. uh, and I've lost a few drones. So I thought about, you know, putting air tags on those. Um. You know, because with the with the um, down to the uh, what is it centimeter uh, ultra wideband U1 chip technology, that's just insane. And oh, yeah. it, you know, with the Find My Network they just launched, like I am totally picking up me a couple of those. Um, put some on the keys, and uh, you know, just anything else I can find, like around my house that I lose. Uh, yeah, I mean, Corbin, I think that yeah. it was it was good because when you talked about um, connecting it to your keys, I had a video running, and it literally, like, timing is always of the essence in video, and it literally showed, like, the keychain accessory right when you said the word keys. And the only reason it did that is because I could read your mind. Not really. But, um, <laughs> you know, the cool thing about AirTags, and for people that aren't familiar that haven't heard about them or are still, like, what makes them so special, they're using – ultra wideband, and this is the technology. Apple calls it, because they put their own little secret sauce in it, the U1 chip. Now, the U1 chip exists in both your iPhones right now, uh, or some of the iPhones, I think as far back as the iPhone 11. Someone's going to slap me and say, you're wrong, Tong. You're wrong! Well, just correct me, because we're doing this all on the fly. Um, But the benefit of that is that these can be able to track and specifically find something within centimeters. So, Right now, when you have any type of Bluetooth tracking items, you you could get them within a few feet or so. But when we're talking about centimeters, this big, everybody, like that, that's a whole different ballgame. And and that's why these are exciting. So, you know, I think that I would definitely buy one. I don't know how many items I would pop them on because my phone has a U1 chip. Um, You know, pretty much project that all tech at least being released 2021 and forward from Apple will have a U1 chip inside it. Let's just pretty much put that assumption in there. We'll see if that comes true. Um, but it, it comes down to other items. Like you said, like a drone, that that makes sense. Now, if you flew your drone over a ditch into the water, it's not going to help you, Corbin. I mean, you know, what, what are you going to do with that? But maybe you, got, you like that peace of mind, right? You like that peace of mind. Or I think you might be like that techie guy who just wants to see your drone flying in real time on Find My and be like, that is so dope. That's so dope. Oh yeah, you might I didn't think guy. of that. Okay, well now now you can. So hey, Corbin, um, I'm thank totally you. doing. Thank thank you for calling. Really appreciate. It. We've got so many calls to go through because everyone's filling up the lines. But thanks for hanging out with us, and really appreciate you stopping by. Uh huh. All right, have a good show. It's going to be fun. Okay, everybody. So what we're going to do now here is I told you that we would talk about the poll. Now I asked like, hey, let's get the number to to 200 responses. Well. Y'all crazy. You you bumped it up to 341. So I'm going to zoom into my screen so we can see this just a little bigger. Um, the good thing is this poll, I don't track any of you. I'm not trying to collect emails or anything. This is all for the benefit of the show. So this is our Apple Spring Loaded event pre-show poll. So first up, we're going to check this out. Are you expecting big things from the Spring Loaded event? I like you all. You are so optimistic. 79%, 273 yeses. 73 you said no, 21%. You're just, y'all, you're all just here for the ride, I guess. Hopefully this is entertaining enough, all right? Let's keep on going down. Which rumored Apple product are you most excited to hopefully see today? At number 1 with 35% of the people, 35.7% iMac, then we go to iPad Pro at 29.2%, then at number 3 AirTags at 18.5%, at numero 4 Apple TV 10.4% and iPad mini at 6.4%. So not not too much hotness around the iPad mini. We're going to keep on going down. Are you looking to upgrade your iPad? Because I think this is always important. The majority of you, although it's pretty close between yes and no, 
41% say no, 37.4% say yes, 21% of you don't even own one. What rumored iPad Pro benefit are you looking forward to? Well, this one's pretty unanimous. We got mini LED display at 50% of the group. Faster processor, we got there, 19.6, Thunderbolt port. And then which iPad are you most focused on? I kind of messed up in the typo because I was typing too fast, but 44% of you like the iPad Pro 12-inch as the number one iPad because this is also, the thing about this is that this is the iPad that rumors have told us will be the one that gets the new mini LED display. All indications, at least as of a day ago, point to the fact that the 12.9 will get the new display technology, which gives you deeper blacks, brighter colors, better power efficiency, um, and hopefully, potentially, they're gonna bring HDR back to the iPad Pro. Uh, I believe it was the second generation that had it, and then the screen tech, um, it just wasn't even able to have a large enough dynamic range, so they took the HDR spec off. Mini LED should bring that back, and you know me, I'm a huge, iPad Pro person, so I would love that to happen. All right, let's keep on rolling in. Will we see AirTags finally, aka AirLags? 80.6% of y'all say yes, 19.4% say no. And how do you feel? How do you really feel about AirTags? 39.5% say can't wait. It's been too long. I think this is the most interesting one. A third, more than a third of you, and coming in second, say you're curious, but the wait has turned you off. So can Apple kind of convince you to do it? 19% of you don't care at all. What item would you prioritize putting an AirTag on? Numero uno, your keys, almost at 50%. Other tech accessories like a camera or a hard drive or a drone like Corbin. And then in third place, this is a real close one. This is an interesting one. Between putting an AirTag on yourself or, or your pet, 41% will put it on their pet, 38% will put them on yourself. So you don't so you so you don't lose yourself. Okay, we're going to have to we're going to have to revisit that a little later. See if that 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 one's going to lie neck and neck. Y'all y'all weird, okay? All right, have you made your mind up about getting AirTags? 43% are on the fence, but because Apple is so good at what they do, maybe Apple can convince you. That's what you're basically saying. Yes, you're going to try them out, 34.5%. I think really we know a lot about Air ta- uh, iPods. Uh, sorry, my goodness, my brain is jumbled. We know a lot about iPads. We do know a lot about AirTags, but we haven't actually seen them. So I think that that makes it cool. My voice just cracked as well. That's really cool too because it's 9-11 in the morning. That's awesome. But I do, I am excited to see the announcement, how they do it, and the best thing about it, this is going to be an Apple's polish style, so I think it's going to be really sick to watch. All right, let's get back to the poll. 22% say, yeah, nah, I don't need them at all. Okay, what's a fair price for you for a single AirTag? 40% of you say $14.99 to $29.99. You're like, okay, that'd be fair. 28% of you are saying, okay, $9.99 to $14.99. Then you got the $4.99 to $9.99 crowd at 18.5%, and then... 13%, the lowest amount of you are saying $29.99 and higher would be fair. And I find that interesting because that tell, that tell to me, that speaks to Apple's kind of target user base, uh, typically higher spenders, where even 13% of you would not be turned off by $29.99 and higher. In fact, also because maybe we've been trained of how Apple prices things, you're almost expecting it. But that that that's where you guys feel is fair. Of course, the money sweet spot, $14.99 and $29.99. The rumors are that they will be $39, um, but we will see. We'll see how that shakes out. Okay. How many AirTags would you buy if they are $39 a pop based on the rumor? Just one for 35% of you. None for 31.5% of you. So those are two are neck and neck. Two to three, 26%. And then three to five is 4%. A real small, small sliver of you all. And five or more, 2.6%. So I think that there's all to me it still shows that we've got a lot of interest around air tags. Let's take a breather before we touch upon the new IMAX. I want to get into more calls and um, see where we can go here. Looks like we have a caller here named Christopher. Christopher from the three two three. If the screen 
soft screen calling software got you right welcome to the big show if you can turn down your actual my voice on your live stream then you'll be good so you turn me down there you go there you go okay. sorry no no you're good there you go thank you no i know i got you by surprise thank you so much for hanging out what's up christopher Oh uh, no, dude! I'm, I'm a first time. Well, I'm a first time like live person just talking to you. All, so I'm like really excited, man. I, yeah. you got me geeking out over here. I'm actually super excited to watch the show too. Um, but that's pretty much what's up, dude. I'm seeing you live right now, and I'm like super excited, man. I'm super excited too. Like you and me, we're right dude. now. The internet is connecting us. That's what's crazy about the internet, right? Let's be, oh, let's dude, be real. I, I see the Wi-Fi, dude. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what do, what is the what did you want to talk about today before the show? What are you most excited about? Uh, well, I've been watching your shows and seeing, like, what would be previewed on today's events and all that. So I'm pretty sure uh, we'll get to see the iPad. And I'm looking at upgrade right now, dude, because I got the iPad Air right now with the Magic Keyboard. But I've been using it so much and so much faster that I really want to upgrade to the iPad Pro. So I'm really excited, dude, to see if there's any, like, significant uh, changes with the new iPad Pro to see, like, if it's warranted for an upgrade from my iPad Pro. Be I'm sorry, from my iPad Air. Because, um, I, like, I, dude, I'm just, like, kicking off excited. Do you me? Yeah. So for the iPad, right, we know, it, we know it's highly likely that this is going to be one of the key things that we see here. You said you own an iPad Air. So do you have an iPad Air that was one of the recent ones with the colored body, or you have an earlier iPad Air? No, no, I have the, the earlier one. I have the, the silver back one, not the colored one, the last year's model, right, the iPad Air. No, I have a... I have 2019, I believe. Yeah. Well, then, to me, it sounds like, right, because you've loved this device, you want a bigger screen, you want a little more oomph, like you're that kind of perfect user where it makes sense. Because for me, I have a 2018 iPad Pro. I know there's going to be some great tech in this thing. I'm going to check it out. But from a usability standpoint, I don't know if I, I'll tell you right now, I don't know if I'm going to upgrade. I have a 12.9 inch iPad Pro from 2018. I didn't upgrade the 2020. So for me, mm -hmm. I'm kind of like, uh, but for you, I could see why you're saying, okay, look, give me more now. You want, you want some mo? Oh, dude, no, totally. I mean, I can see why you would upgrade. Even then, uh, I believe that the new, uh, what is it, CPU or what uh, the the pretty much the brain of the iPad Pro, the new one that's going to come out this year. I think that's even warranted enough for you to even upgrade, you know, to the new iPad Pro. What I want essentially, though, when I upgrade to the Pro, though, is like the same ratio i would say not the square of the like the 13 inch um ipad pro but like the 11 inch ipad pro i like the rectangular shape of it just because um that's like easier to me it looks like a paper you know it feels like a paper and i can just hold it with with one hand a lot easier so are you telling me that you don't like the more like four by three squared off format um four by three uh let's see four Kind of like, lengthwise, three wide. Kind of, kind of like it's more. I don't know. I want to say it's a little more boxier, like my twelve point nine inch. Like, I you know, some people were really happy that the Snyder cut of uh, of the Justice League. Oh, dude, I <laughs> I love that one. It was so good. I mean, I wish it was longer. Honestly, I mean, they should have split like cyborg part. They should have uh, <laughs> made um, a new part for Wonder Woman. You know, dude. And then, like, um, oh, dude, even, like, Superman deserves some justice. You know, even, uh, what's his name, uh, the Martian. <laughs> hey, Mar Martian Manhunter. I mean, they were they were just teasing all. But, um, you know, for me, I'm, I, I get it. Like, I love the new tech, but I just don't know. I'm saying, you know, when I think about this stuff, look, the reality is that being a tech YouTuber, you see a lot of people basically always rave about the newest one. But I, I'm coming to it from a more grounded perspective. Like, not everyone can buy a new device every single year. And so it's for me, it's my perspective of, okay, if I'm spending my own money on this, which I am, does this yeah. – is this a strong enough compelling reason for not only me to upgrade knowing what my interests are, but is it compelling enough for people at home to upgrade as well, right? Everyone mm -hmm. has different needs. Every user is different. And so – Mm -hmm. I just want to f be able to explain and find that sweet spot that makes sense for people instead of basically say, it has this, it has this, it's awesome. Oh, my God. Like, that doesn't help anybody except people that just want to hear that it's awesome. And so, you know, I, I like to take a little more measured approach. And that's why, you know, although a mini LED is nice, I don't know how much it's really going to change what I do, but I'm hoping to really see more software hooks, uh, even specifically like maybe that's coming in iPad OS, but that, that's the type of stuff that I want to see. And the iPad OS, the new software. Um, 
Well, uh, let's see. How do I go about this? Well, honestly, um, I, I see what you're saying about warranting, like, an upgrade from my own money and how that would, like, help me out. Because that's what, exactly what I did. Um, I recently just upgraded from my iPhone XR, which I love right now. It's yellow. Dude, I got the yellow uh, XR, and I'm selling that right now. But I upgraded yeah. past to the iPad Pro. Yeah, oh, dude, I loved it. But I upgraded because it was too slow. I noticed that I was going a lot faster. Uh, I needed, uh, like, the faster RAM. Or, you know, I pretty much used the speed of the Apple. Uh, so I got the iPad 12 Pro. I mean, sorry, I got the, I got the, which one's the iPhone 12 Pro. I got the white, uh, white one. I mean, I'm just geeking out. And as far as like the software goes on the on the iPad, um, honestly, I wish Pages was more upgraded. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I do like about using the iPad uh, with the keyboard is writing real quick, like on the fly, maybe like journal entries or just like a paper for class. Um, so I wish, you know, Pages was more, I guess to the standard, you know, how I, uh, uh, my iPhone, you know, how much I would love it because I feel like, Pages is a like a big outlet for Apple just because um it signifies like mental creativity as far as like writing down your own thoughts and all that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I would love to see like Pages super upgraded on my iPad. That would be amazing because um the way that things are going right now, dude, I think I'm gonna get the 12 Pro if it comes out. It's I nice. mean the the iPad Pro if it comes out this year. Yeah, yeah. It's real nice. I think you're gonna love it. So all right, well, hey, Christopher, thank you so much for calling, my man. Um juice that this is your first time live don't be a stranger call back anytime and uh you know we are open mm. here uh at the end of the keynote just to let people know we do have a post show wrap up where people kind of basically call in and either cry or celebrate their wins or losses so you take an l you get a dub yeah. depending on what happens today uh that's why we're here so thanks so much for calling christopher really appreciate it bro that's me dude you know i love you guys <laughs> thank you man all right appreciate it i love i love also yeah. like you know there's community here. So when he says guys, I don't know if he thinks like more than one person is making the show because it's not it's just me. But guys and gals, like collectively, um, we're all here. I do have to give a shout out, my friend, my goodness, Derek Ludwig with a $50 Super Chat contribution. I can't follow all of them all the time, but thank you so much. That is wild. Um, allow me to continue to do this. And yeah, it's so generous of you all. Um, please feel free to keep on calling. The phone lines are completely stacked, but let's let's get to one more call before we continue on with our poll and then um, have another, a few reminders. It is 9.20 a.m., so Apple's keynote will start at 10 a.m. Pacific time, approximately 40 minutes. The key thing to know here is that I can't risk getting my live stream taken down, so what I do is I do an audio play of the keynote and then I just comment on top of it. But if you want to, you can roll with it and stay. If not, um, and you, you know you have to sync up the broadcast, come back after the keynote, and we're going to talk all about about it, okay? So let's go back here to um, our calls here. Looks like I'm going to see here if I got Chris, who wants to talk about IMAX from the 475. Chris, can you hear me, my friend? I'll give it a few moments. He's probably, I'm on mute right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, Chris, Chris. Okay, I'm gonna put him back in the queue. Just be ready, y'all. Y'all gotta be. Y'all gotta be like super ready for this. I'm just kidding. Okay, let's try the. Let's try my friend here, Kevin from the nine five six calling in, engineering student. Kevin, can you hear me? Sometimes also I just have to check if I Skype. Oh, that is why, guys. Hold on. Okay, this happens sometimes where our friend Skype drops off. And what I have to do is I have to end up recalling Skype um, to get things set up. So if you are all patient, this is like how we're making the sauce. All right, let give me a second to um, call back the number. Hold on, we'll see here. Can I do this? Okay, give me a second, everybody. This is, I wonder if you could guess what number I just pressed based on the tone. So sit tight. I have to call into this software to allow us to get the show on the road. Thank you for calling Call-In Studios host and call screener line. Please enter your show number and press pound. Okay, I better not goof around because I'm going to screw this up. <laughs> wow, this is this is amazing. <laughs> this is enter so your six-digit pin number. Six-digit pin number. Okay. Welcome, host. You are now in the host room and can manage your callers from the call-in studio web interface. Yay. Okay, let's get back Let's get back to the calls here. Chris, I'm sorry from the 475. I will 
hit you up one more time. I'm crossing my fingers this is going to work. Chris, are you there, my friend? Hey, hey, Brian. Hey, man. You're patient. You know, you know, hey. I appreciate that. Nah, no worries. No worries. Uh, big fan of the show. Thank, Thank you for you. having me on. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about um, basically two quick things. Um, the Believe it or not, I know John Processor. I believe he mentioned about the Magic keyboard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, hopefully, that's something that I, I'm actually interested in. Um, I have an iPad Pro, the 2020, but I never bought the Magic keyboard. Um, one thing that, you know, that kind of like was on the fence was about the uh, Function Row keys. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I hope if this one has it, mm -hmm. that would be amazing. Also, like if you could store um, like your your Apple Pencil, that would be like amazing somewhere else instead of like on top of the uh, the pack. Because sometimes, you know, you, I throw it in a bag and then when I take out my iPad, my pencil's like all the way sunken in the bottom of my bag. And it just like it sucks. <laughs> just keep looking for it. I you know, so on that. that's one thing. And then the other thing would be like the iMac. The iMac is like something that I'm like so 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 happy to like finally see like an upgrade and kind of taking back to like the old style with like all the colors and stuff oh yeah it's gonna be so sweet. that's that's another thing and see the performance of like an m1 desktop you know mac you know that that's gonna be amazing so those are like two of the other things you know that i wanted to talk about also um you know maybe a, a t wheezy uh album dropping soon oh, okay 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 so uh the, you know <laughs> So for people that aren't familiar, I mean, every time there's some big product drops, I typically get like a music video out. To be honest, I had a music video yeah. that was ready to drop last year. Um, but now with things, you know, COVID hit, it's there are certain things that I can't do on my own. When you're doing a music video and you want to do it justice, you know, you, you got to have help. So COVID kind of shut that down. But um, I do. It's about I would say it's about 50 to 60 percent done. I'm waiting for something else to drop product wise so that I can put out I'm kind of trying to like basically I'm predicting what's going to happen so the song is dictated on those things happening so then it'll be feel like really relevant and current when it comes out so I do have one that's in the wings and I also have um in development a very I'm not here to hype it up but a very s special iPhone song this year that's all I'm going to say no man go ahead hype it up hype it up man <laughs> is is good I'm is going to be gold. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, th thanks so much for, you know, for, like, obviously you stuck with me through the year. So it's kind of just a fun way to be creative and, you know, enjoy. We do the day to day grind, but sometimes you got to have fun with this and otherwise it's going to beat you down. So the music videos are like Absolutely. my favorite thing to do. They probably take the most work to do and, you know, they're songs. So it's not like I'm trying to make money off of them. That's why, like, when people contribute, it helps <laughs> kind of keep me going to do these really passion things that bring y'all joy so, and bring me joy, quite honestly. So um, I just appreciate the support, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for having me on, Brian. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it, man. So Chris calling in. Um, thank you for that, everybody. We are here about, what, 926? So we've got about 34 minutes left to go. Let's go back and revisit, revisit the poll because, you know, we talked about AirTags. Chris left us off with Air Ma uh, IMAX. You also can see um, down on the bottom here, we have our phone number. That is the best way to call in, to be a part of the show. We have 10 phone lines. They are all filled. They are all always filled, but I keep on cranking through them. We have now over 400 respondents in our poll, so let's see what uh, what we have to say here. Will we see new IMAX? You all are so optimistic. 77.7% .7 say yes. 22.3% say nah. I mean, that's really optimistic. We really don't know, but... You know, the rumor, it shows how the rumor mill and the hype beasts, like, it matters. You know, Apple may not like leaks, but I think it's all part of the ethos now um, that generates buzz and interest. And look, if I was working on the Apple team and I spent two or three years of my life working on a product that I wanted it to be kept secret so people could see it for that first time, I would be disappointed, honestly. Like, these people do amazing work. We get to play with this stuff. We get to evaluate this stuff. Really, obviously, the genius is the ones that make this. I have never felt otherwise. So I only I criticize it from a standpoint of how it affects me as a user and others. But these people are way smarter than I am. So I, 
but these leaks are good. Uh, they they help kind of drive us, and quite honestly, like it's good for business for everybody. So, will we see new IMAX? Four hundred thirteen responses. Y'all say seventy seven percent. Absolutely yes. What rumored IMAX feature excites you the most? Now, I gave you guys a bunch of different options. At number one, this kind of makes sense. All of the above. I offered a new similar design to the Pro Display XDR, a new Apple M1 chip inside, a flat back, which was the smallest response, and then color options at 9%. I was going to break it down individually, but this is just such a massive upgrade. I think it's indicative of showing you just how big of a change this is going to be for the iMac line, which really hasn't fundamentally changed its actual physical design in, geez, maybe like roughly 10, uh, eight, eight or nine years. So that's a big deal. And it also shows that design changes matter. And it's not going to happen every year. We've seen it with the iPhone. It comes around maybe every two, two to three years now, two and a half years or so. But, um, you know, design makes everyone feel like it's fresh and brand new. And there you go. Okay, let's get back here. What is your main computing device that you use the most? I, I thought this was interesting, not including your phone, because this is kind of trying to track the habits of how you all use these things. 46% of you are using a MacBook Pro or Air, basically an Apple laptop. And number two, an iPad at 15.8%. At third, a PC desktop at 12.6%. Then we have an iMac at 11.4% and a PC laptop at 10%. So an iMac and a PC laptop, based on the users that are watching this, I know obviously we have a lot of Apple users here. You guys are neck and neck. Oh, um, yeah. So, and then we got a sliver, the Mac Pro, which is obviously really for high-end professional creatives in general, and then like YouTubers. <laughs> and then an Android tablet bringing it up at 1%. Shout out to the 1% right there. Shout out to y'all. You're brave. You filled out the poll properly. I appreciate it. Okay, let's go here for more, more goodies. Give me that. There we go. Will we see a new Apple TV? There's a lot of optimism amongst you, but in this one, 52.3% say no. 47.7, 47.8% uh, it just changed on the fly. So yes, we will see a new Apple TV. Are you looking to upgrade? Now remember, the Apple TV hasn't been upgraded in years now. And I think, oh man, I can't remember how many years. Is it like over three or so? My brain is starting to fart on me, but we're close to that. So looking to upgrade, 34% for, for yes, 30% no. 34.8, which is the largest amount, maybe if Apple can convince me. And I think it's, I put this uh, question in some of the polls. When I put maybe if Apple can convince me, it typically gets a large uh, chunk of the responses because again, I think there's a lot of people that, I'm not saying they just want to spend their money, but they want, because they're so locked into this ecosystem, they want Apple to give them a reason to spend money. All right, what rumored Apple TV feature excites you the most? It's This is a pretty crazy grid right here. It's almost split pretty much in quarters, but we got at number one, 26.3%, that 120 hertz refresh rate support. Obviously, you have to have a new modern TV or a monitor if you're connecting to it to take advantage of that. At 25.8%, a version that is more like a gaming with console-like graphics. That's a rumor. We don't know if that's happening but that's one of the options. Then we have a remote with the U1 chip for Find My and a faster processor at 23%. All right, this is where it gets fun. This is where it gets crazy, but I just asked, what do you think open-ended? What do you think Apple really means by a spring-loaded event? Okay, if you guys can see the response, guys and gals can see the responses, lots of products, lots of stuff, load of products, loaded with products, a lot of products, iMac colors, brand new Apple logo with the colors returning, this event is going to be so low, it's going to blow our minds. Okay. Anyways, lots of products. And finally, before we get to it, what could be Apple's one more thing? Surprise announcement. The majority of you say AirPods 3. We know that these are rumored to be coming out in uh, potentially in the second half of the year, roughly the third quarter. But they've been rumored for a while. Maybe, maybe they surprise us. I mean, from all indications, we know that Apple TV is pretty much ready to go. Um iMacs, maybe, but AirPods 3 manufacturing-wise are supposed to start up um, in the third quarter of this year. But that, that got the number one response. And then after that, we have, there's nothing. There is no one more thing. Okay, fine. Fair enough. 
Uh, then we have 18.2% an Apple AR VR headset preview. I think if we see anything like that, they're going to showcase it at WWDC to get developers on board like really early. And then we got new IMAX at 14.7%, new 16-inch MacBook Pro. All right, so there you go. That's kind of like a little bit of smorgasbord of our poll. We're under 30 minutes before Apple begins their keynote. I think um, before we keep on going, we should sh kind of show some more love and thank you to Mauricio. Thank you for your support. And also, Brian Brown, thank you for your support. Okay, let's get to the calls. Y'all are waiting so patiently. I really appreciate it. First one up, our friend Chuck from the 240. Chuck, my friend, if you can hear me, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going, Brian? It's good, it's um, I'm good. actually not in... I'm not actually in uh, the two four for zero. I'm actually in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. It's, it's an old number. So. Hey, you got to you got to represent, and the, you know Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, going strong. Thank you so much for calling and taking your time out today to kind of hang out and wait. According to the the call program, you've been waiting thirty five minutes. So yeah, I called in earlier. I couldn't get in. I several times it was busy, so it, was, it took me a few tries, but I finally got in. Yes, sir. All right, so welcome. What do you want to talk about today? Uh, well, first, I just really quick want to say, I was just going to say before that, uh, you know, I've been a big fan of you since the CNET days, so it's uh, great to finally talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Honestly, thank you so much. It's, 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 a, it's a journey, yeah, and I'm so, having fun. Well, that's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think the thing I, I just want to talk about for me is the iPad uh, Pro. I know a lot of people aren't uh, excited about the iPad, you know, for some reason. They, I'm excited, you know, baby. Either I'm excited. More, yeah, I mean, you know, you know what it is. It it does seem like an iterative update. You know, it's not going to be a major design change or any you know mind blowing features, at least from what we know. The thing that's upsetting for me is really that the 11 inch to me is the ideal size. I have a 2018 11 inch and I love it, and I do all my work on it. I do multimedia work and stuff like that, and it's just fine for that. And it's much more convenient to carry around and hold and use than the 12.9. But that that's why it's a little sad that the 12.9 is the one that's only uh the only one to be rumored to be getting the mini led so yeah you know i think that part of it we could say might be because of just the supply chain and the manufacturing process but to your point i think i said in one of my earlier videos like this would be the first time at least from what i know that they would release a product with two different display technologies for the same product skew like we did have the iphone uh, 10R or XR, depending on what you want to call it, and the iPhone. Um, did that come with the 10 or the 11? Geez, my brain is all jumbled. But at that time, those are two different phone models. But we're talking about here, iPad Pros. Only difference is size. Now potentially yeah. coming with two different screen texts. I mean that. If if this is the case, I would actually really hope to see a larger price cut on the 11 inch. Maybe make it 100, 150 yeah, dollars cheaper. Then at least you can justify but if it's basically keeps the same exact price point that the 11 has and is a new model that gets a slightly faster processor that they still have to utilize it's still underutilized maybe it gets a thunderbolt 3 port that's not enough for me to, for them to say we're keeping it at the same price so they've got to navigate that and figure out what makes sense if they're not going to bring mini led to the 11 inch yeah, yeah, you hit on a lot of the points I talked about. I was gonna, uh, I was gonna mention was the Thunderbolt, um, and and also, um, you know, the other features. And if they're not gonna add that mini LED, then it doesn't seem like they should maintain the same price point for the smaller one. Um, and the other thing I I see a lot of people complain about, and this is honestly such a first world problem. <laughs> uh, thank you for like acknowledging that. I love like, that. It, I love that. Yeah, it, it, it what it is 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 the. Um, People complaining that they oh well you know with the micro uh, the mini LED display it's going to be eight percent thicker and I'm like the, the iPads are already way too thin I mean, I, I couldn't care less if it was eight percent thicker if anything that'll probably solve the bend gate problem mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. so you know that that's a big thing and then you know on the software side of things um, well actually before I talk about that the, the Magic Keyboard do you think anything's going to change on that so. All, all the kind of buzz indicates that no, there's been no sign that there's going to be a significant major physical change. The only change we might see, is it could be possible that it's only made to accommodate this potentially 
thicker iPad, you know. Um, so we're, we're going to have to wait and see. Right. Yeah, I don't – even though they could fit a row of uh, function keys on it, quite honestly, there's space to make things a little tighter. I, I, I just don't see them doing that because Apple really treats the iPad like its own thing. Like it's – it is not supposed to be anything right. else but an iPad experience. And so I don't see them doing that yet. So we're just going to have to wait and see. But if anything, like, I think it might just be a form factor change. Um, we saw a bunch of them go on deeper discounts on Amazon, but it was for the 11-inch. They were, like, putting them for, like, uh, uh, $100 off, but not the 12.9-inch. And if anything changes in size, it's really going to be the 12.9-inch. So, like you and I are all here for, just going to have to wait and see. Okay. <laughs> Right. Well, well, and then, yeah, yeah, and 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 the another caller actually brought this up as well. But one of the things that I, I have a Magic Keyboard, I use it sometimes. But when I go out, I actually use the Keyboard Folio along with a um, I forgot who the manufacturer is, but there's a company that makes a combo case which the Keyboard Folio slides into that encapsulates the iPad, so you get side protection and you get a little spot that holds your Apple Pencil on the charging spot, you know, kind of surrounds it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it just makes more sense so that the pencil's not rattling around. So I've got, you know, uh, side protection on the iPad. And one of the things that I wish they could do is offer like an optional accessory that could give you additional protection with the Magic Keyboard. But, you know, if you just wanted to rock it, you know, just stick it on there and go, you know, that'd be fine. But if you want that extra protection, that, that could be an optional accessory. Um, you know, obviously not really Apple's game, you know, their whole minimalist thing and everything, but it'd be nice to see, you know. Well, Chuck, uh, just want to say thank you so much for calling. I think that the company whose case you mentioned probably really would have wished you remembered it, but it's okay. I mean, it's not, it's not your, <laughs> they're like, say the name, <laughs> yeah, say so the were... name right now. There are people watching. I'm just messing around. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, uh, thanks again for calling. Really appreciate it. And we'll have a good show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Awesome, man. Keep it up, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so there you go. Chuck Klein out from uh, Pittsburgh. Let's go to a call that has waited patiently. That was during the whole phone snafu thingamajigger. It looks like we've got Kevin from the 956. Kevin, can you hear me loud and clear? Welcome to the show. Howdy, Brian. What's up? What is up? Thanks for your patience. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, man. No, so... Um... I actually own a uh, mid-2017 MacBook Pro uh, with touch bar that I've been using for mm. my mechanical engineering degree since, well, since I got it. And uh, right now I have Bootcamp on it using SolidWorks since SolidWorks isn't really available for, uh, for Mac OS. So with uh, Apple kind of, you know, transitioning to their own silicon, I wonder if they'll at one point with combination with Windows bring back Bootcamp. I can keep using their their... Honestly, in my opinion, probably the best design language on the market. Yeah. Well, you know, to, to answer your question, so once Apple transitioned over to the M1 chip, um, there was a lot of debate of will some of these uh, virtual emulation software apps support it. And out of the gates, it didn't. But from the last time I read, I feel like within the past week, Parallels came out and said they finally have a version um, that can allow you to run Windows on an M1 Mac, at least for the new Macs. Now, when it comes to boot camp, Apple has kind of actually thrown the ball back into um, the court over to Windows, saying, like, if they want to work with us, um, there's no reason that boot camp can't work on an M1. Uh, it does not right now for the new Macs. And so... I don't know if that's going to happen, because but it it'll come down to them playing nice and and then putting them in the develop putting the development time in whether it's subsidized behind the scenes probably not um, to see if boot camp comes the M1 I think that it would actually surprise me this time around and the fact that other emulation software although not native native like Parallels runs on it um, I'd be surprised if boot camp comes the M1 but I hope it does just for users like you. Yeah, thanks, man. No, but I mean, uh, like, uh, I know the, what was it, the Surface Pro X, I know that they run an ARM-based system on right. it, so my question is, how much behind they are on just making it run purely on ARM? Well, that and that's exactly what Apple kind of alluded to, like, you guys have a product that runs ARM, so, um, you know, it's up to them to make it work. I think it comes from both sides. I mean, Apple's always going to say it's up to you guys to make it happen, but it goes both ways. So uh, we will see. I mean, quite honestly, WWDC is two months away. Uh, that's a great opportunity for an announcement like that to potentially happen. So I think we're just going to have to wait and see if it does. All right. Thanks, man. Right. I appreciate all the content you put out, and 
Keep making some good stuff, bro. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it, Kevin. Take care, all right? Thanks for hanging. Likewise. All right, everybody. Okay, so um, there are people in the chat. Uh, if I'm going to try. If you feel like asking a question, um, I'm going to try and keep my eyes peeled uh, to answer to answer a question right now. So so we'll, we'll I want to show love to all of you, basically, all right? Um, we are at... Just about uh, 15, 16, 17 minutes before Apple does their keynote. Again, I will not be able to play the video here because I want to keep my live stream up and running for y'all. We will have a post show where we break it down and talk about everything. And then I'll have to leave because I have like a special call I have to get to after the keynote, which is probably good that I get to it for future coverage of products. If you know what I mean. But I don't know what's, I don't know what's happening, but... I don't know what's happening, but I have a call that will tell me, in addition to what's happening, what's going to happen. Does that make sense? Do I, I'm not making sense at all. I actually was winking on the wide camera, so it didn't. It probably didn't translate. So I have a meeting after the keynote. I'm bad at winking. <laughs> I should just stop. Ah, ah. Okay, okay. Let's just stop. All right. Uh, there's some questions here in the chat. I'm hoping I'm. Getting it here. Okay, RM17 just asked, Brian, do you think there will be any completely new products? Uh, I don't, if, well, AirTags is completely new. So actually, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, there will be new products, the AirTags, completely new. If you're talking about products we've never heard of that are gonna be a 100% surprise to us, um, I would say no. If, if it by a surprise, meaning maybe like a case that we've never heard of, seen, then okay, but um, yeah, no, no, nothing big like that. We're gonna go back here. It looks like Yasmani Diaz says, "Hey Brian, what's the product you're most excited about?" So that's actually a pretty good question because if I had to think about it, I I've actually lost excitement about AirTags, but I'm actually excited to see them presented. I do like the fact that AirTags find thirty nine bucks. It's kind of a lot, but I would buy one. It's kind of a fun thing. It won't change everything. I'm more excited for the iPad Pro today and then what WWDC has to um, have to offer it in two months because it's kind of weird that if we see an iPad Pro, we're going to get new hardware and then we kind of they kind of got to hold on, you know, you know, keep things under the kimono, so to speak, before they open it up and show us what's coming in iPad OS at WWDC. So I think it's kind of maybe for the iPad specifically a two tier two step announcement, um, but you still got to show us enough to make it say like, dude, I got to get the new iPad Pro. Like I'm a 2018 guy and I'm still like, eh, I don't know. So um, iPad Pro would still be the product I'm most excited about. But if they do IMAX, then yes, that would be the most thing I'm most excited about. But I really feel like it's gonna be iPads and uh, AirTags. That that's just what my gut says. All right. Shout out to Leonardo HSU, freaking supporting with twenty four ninety nine for my live stream and all my content. Thank you so much. Uh, he stopped by to say that he followed me since that other place. Loves the shows and keep up with the good work. Thank you, thank you, Leonardo. I appreciate it and thank you for all your support. Okay, let's let's enough about me. Um, I do want to mention one more thing. Oh yeah, real quickly, ways that you can support my content. I only mentioned this once before. I'm gonna do it one more time. Twice in an hour and a half is okay. I feel like that's fair. Uh, Patreon.com slash Brian Tong is the way that you all can support me if you haven't already. There have been so many of you that support my content that allow me to keep on doing this, quite honestly. It starts at $2 per month, but it covers you for early access to content. There's bonuses at different levels. And then I do a weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast. You get completely no ads whatsoever. And then the other bonus on here is that um, we do a monthly zoom call with all my patreon supporters so it is private we literally just hang out for an hour it's become this really cool thing there's like a real bond a community we literally talk about everything from tech to streaming to geek culture to what else do we talk about well you're just gonna have to find out so if you'd like to support me patreon.com slash brian tong that is the way to do it okay like i said let's get back to the calls y'all um let's see if we got this person here been waiting for roughly an hour and six minutes from the 561. I don't have a name, but you're on the show. Welcome. How can we help you? Who is this? Hey, Brian. It's Andrew from Florida calling again. Andrew, you stuck with it, Andrew. Up, man? You are, I think, 
you've got to be on at least like the past three or four shows now. You're you're like a regular, bro. Yeah, absolutely, I call all the time. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, what do you want to talk about today, Andrew? You know, I've just, I, you know, I'm hopefully at like, you know, you you had your talk with John Prosser and like that the air tags are not vaporware and that they come out hopefully today. Mm-hmm. You know, we 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 we've all had this like you know hopefully it comes out today that, that that's that's what <laughs> that that is true um is that the product that not only are you hoping for but you are the most excited about yeah definitely because um like i have a 2018 ipad pro and it's like what you say every time that like the 2020 didn't do anything for anyone who currently owns a 2018 and who knows if the, the 2021 ipad pro will do anything for the 2018 users anyway and then same thing with the one Mac mini. So like, I don't, you know, I don't see a need to, you know, get a new iMac anyway. And I'm, you know, I was really happy when, yeah, man, I just bought a new M1 Mac mini. I was like, yes, that means that he is not expecting maybe something bigger out of an M1X or M2 or whatever. That... Yeah. Hey, Andrew, you've been breaking, up a, you've been breaking up a tiny bit, but oh. I was able to put all the pieces together. But um, in, to your touch point about the M1 Mac Mini, uh, you know, 699 entry level for that machine, uh, if you already have a display, is ridiculous. Um, and it's that's why even if they put an M1, I, I, I got to imagine they're going to give it a little extra juice um, whenever these iMacs get announced. I, I'm i still like, I could flip a coin if we see them or not today, and maybe they'll surprise us. But, you know, if they give us a little juice and give us an M1X in the new iMacs, I mean... That that is the ultimate consumer machine. Quite honestly, it has been for a while. They just kind of needed to breathe new life into it. So um, we'll see what happens. But Andrew, I'm gonna keep on crunch, crunching through the calls because we're about ten minutes out before the keynote. Um, but thanks so much for calling, buddy. Oh, his his call his call actually just went bye bye. So I, I guess I got him at the right time. <laughs> All right, let's go into here. Next up, coming. Looks like my friend's name is Justin from the six o two. What's up? Welcome to the show, Justin. Are you there? Can you hear me? Oh, see, look, this is what happened. When the call software goes down, it's not buggy, but I think it's just, you know, there's a lot of things going on. So let's give me a moment, everybody. We're going to punch us in one more time. I also know that my uh, little sky cam is a little blown out because I forgot to uh, manually correct it. But just give me one second. We'll get these calls back up and running. But uh, thank you so much for everybody for just kind of hanging out here and spending your time. I mean, we're about what ten minutes out now. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting close. Thank you for calling Colin Studios host and call screener okay. line. You guys will get a Please enter your show number and press pound. Okay, show number. Three, six, yeah. Okay, okay. Enter your six-digit PIN number. <laughs> Ooh. If someone knew this, they could do horrible things to me. Okay, let's get back on this. Welcome, back host. On. You are now in the host room and can manage your callers from the call-in studio web interface. Okay, so Justin has been waiting patiently. I don't know if Justin is still there, but if you can hear me, my friend, uh, from the 602, holla. Can you hear me? Yeah, boy. Hey, appreciate you. Appreciate <laughs> you. You callers are steadfast. I mean, you guys wait 51 minutes. Justin, thank you, my man. All right, I'm gonna get straight to it though. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank you. I caught before. I caught during the iPhone 12 event. If you, I don't know if you remember. Justin, I love I you, but sometimes it's hard to remember. <laughs> like I love yeah. you, but it's well, hard. I mean, it's hard. I know. I'm. I'm gonna try to just try to like. I asked for like colorful uh, MacBook Pros. You said you wanted a purple one, and I was like, oh, okay, that would happen. Mm-hmm. But now I'm happy that we're going to have colorful iMac, and I feel like these are going to be like the lower end iMacs because I feel like the higher ones, higher end ones, are going to have like Face ID, all the more expensive stuff. So I feel like it's going to be way more lower end. I think it's going to be thin as the iPad Pro. You know, that, think... that's my thought because cause if it's going to run the same chips and the same like software, basically, why can't it be thin as the iPad Pro? Well, you bring up a great point because. Okay, we don't know what direction they're going, but we've seen that the iPad Pro, the new, their most recent OS, is starting to morph into more of a hybrid iOS and desktop OS. We're starting to see the connectivity between the latest Mac OS. Big sir, 
Like we see, Big how, <laughs> you know how we do it, but um, we're starting to see that how there's a lot more cross cross breeding between the two platforms, and so, you know, I'm not saying they would do it, but you're right about the point that they could if they really wanted to, almost make like slap on a larger screen iPad, even run the OS. It supports a keyboard and it supports a mouse, and do that. Now it wouldn't support all the desktop applications yet. But maybe they surprised us with something at WWDC. I mean, I think everything is on the table now with where the direction of Apple software Rosetta is. Rosetta 2 is really fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Rosetta 2 is amazing. Absolutely. And so um, everything's on the table now with the M1 being an ARM-based chip and what they can do and what, what decisions they make. So that's why WWDC to me is super exciting and we'll see what happens, but I yeah. love how you're thinking like, hey, just make it as thin as an iPad Pro. It can run everything yeah. anyways. And like, I think these like, iMacs are going to be more of a lower end because I, I don't see them just be like, oh, these are these new um, iMacs and they're expensive. People are going to be like, oh, then I don't want to invest my money into that. Yeah. Make it cheap right now. Then yeah. later down in WWDC, bring out the bigger, higher end ones and then put that alongside the iPhone and you're like, oh, I want to have a Pro desktop so I can see them having an iMac Pro Maybe I'm saying something way too much. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're you, you, Tim well, Cook is going to come to my house, well, and I'm going to be like on the news <laughs> next week. <laughs> the the only reason why you know, look, they even they even removed the iMac Pro from the lineup because these new iMacs that are going to be coming in with the, whether it's an M1 or an M1X chip, we're going to be able to outperform a Mac an iMac Pro out of the gates, right? So they actually had to do that. It would be embarrassing to be like, oh, our entry level iMac outperforms the iMac Pro. So that's Right, that's why that happened. Um, and is there space for them to make a higher tier iMac, whether it ends up being called iMac Pro or something else? Absolutely. I mean, we've heard rumors of them even potentially increasing the screen sizes um, from the twenty-one and a half and twenty-seven inches currently to twenty-four. Oh, iMac and Pro Max. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, there's they can only go with so far with so many words. We got Air and Pro <laughs> and Max on the table and numbers. Okay, that. We, yeah. They're not going to do, like, iMac Infinity, so Pro Max. <laughs> Let's uh, start penciling so I do have uh, one question for you. <laughs> yeah, what's up? With the MacBooks, are you ready for colors on that? the MacBooks? Even though I don't think it's going to be the MacBook Pros, but just the regular MacBooks are going to come in colors. I'd love that. That's what I'm ready for. I'd love that. I think, I think going back... They're going to take away the touch bar, and they're going to start adding colors. Hey, you know, I love that because, to me, Apple in the past two years specifically has kind of started moving back or at least satisfying some of those loyal customers and listening to us, which means they were really listening like three years ago when people were getting frustrated after like the iPhone 7 and 7S and they're like, ah, you're not doing anything different. You know, the Mac Pro, they finally addressed that. They're, they reclaimed like kind of the the uh, butterfly to scissor switch keyboard on the Mac Pros. Like they're doing things that show like they're listening to us now. So I think anything's on the table and that wouldn't surprise me to bring back some of that nostalgia we've seen so many products even phones like colors are what get people excited about phones now because phones are so mature and aren't really doing much different anymore that we see a lot of people talk about oh that color is what gets me excited so uh i think it makes sense on the consumer line to do that we'll see if it happens so thanks so much for calling justin thanks for your patience appreciate it bro definitely have a good one all right you too. Bye. all right everybody so um before apple's keynote is going to start in roughly Three minutes and 26 seconds. Ah! But I do want to um, give a shout out to Sal Key CB, uh, who put out a $10 contribution, says, been a supporter since the CNET buzz out loud and Apple bite days. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I know there were some other contributions, but they disappeared while I was talking to Justin because like these things just kind of go fast and furious. Um, let's take one more call. I'm sorry for everyone else. Jim from Minnesota. Uh, from the 651. I'm going to put you on the show right now just because we're going to try and get you before the keynote starts. Jim, thank you for calling. What's up, my man? Hey, Brian. How's it going today? It's going uh, good. Doing super good. Super excited. Yeah, super excited. Um, I think Apple is going to try to push services again at this keynote um, just because I've heard a lot of rumors that they're going to try to compete with uh, all these Spotify's and everything. And uh, I think they're going to start putting uh, podcasts behind paywalls mm -hmm. um, just to compete. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, I would love I would love to see the numbers on all the services that they've announced over the last two years because I'll ask general people in my area 
hey, do you know about Apple Fitness? Do you know this? And, and they don't know any of these services or what they are. Well, you know, when we talk about services, I think you bring a great point because, look, this is a, a space for Apple where they, you know, Tim Cook, I believe it was like three and a half years or so ago, said he wanted to double their services revenue. They've absolutely done that before his timetable. And we know they have so many services, but I think the thing about it is Apple's never going to report those numbers to us. Uh, they, they said they wouldn't, and they would only report them if they're really impressive. We know how Apple does like to brag and show off, and because they haven't, it, it tells us that maybe their services are not as robust from a subscription standpoint as we think, but collectively, because of the power of the Apple ecosystem, they are, I think, oh man, how many billions of dollars did their... Did they did they hit one and a half or two billion in revenue for just their services? So, again, you know, my my brain is a little bit of scrambled eggs right now. But, you know, something like Apple TV Plus, everyone is still on a free subscription. They have extended the free trial for a long time now, and we're just gonna have to wait and see. You know, can they flip that? Because that's a big that's a big content thing right there. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, and one other thing I wanted to just go over. Um, I think it was your your second to last caller, Kevin. Um, yeah, you can put uh, Windows ARM base on a Mac M1. We've successfully done it, but there's no reason to do it because all the applications that you would run on Windows isn't built off the M1 architecture, so nothing works. And that's like Oracle is trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. So I work with some people at Oracle, and they are just basically telling us like, well, right now they're we can't run VirtualBox. We haven't developed any software for the M1 chip, and that comes down to um, even me. I have an M1 MacBook Pro, and I got rid of my iPad Pro because I didn't see a use for my iPad Pro anymore because now I can run iPad apps on my Mac, which, I mean, LumaFusion, a lot of people on the Internet are using that to edit YouTube videos. Well, if you don't want to learn Final Cut or pay for those services, you can get an M1 Mac, and you can use LumaFusion, and it, it runs way better. So. There's a lot of, uh, I, I don't know what to, you call it, um, Apple came out and said, hey, we're not making a hybrid, we're not going to merge Mac OS, um, and we're not going to merge iPad OS together, but I mean, over the last two years, they're literally doing that because the architecture mm -hmm. of the chips are basically the same, yep. right? So. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if in, I, you're not going to see it this year, but I won't be surprised in the next two years, you will see a touchscreen MacBook Pro. Yep, absolutely. It's going to happen. Hey, Jim, um, you know what? The keynote is just starting up, so I'm going to let go. You, Everyone who's on the phone yeah, lines. Yeah, one, one can, quick question, No, no, Jim, 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 I got to go, 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 go. Just trust me, trust me on this. What so. color Mac are you going to get if they come out with Macs? What color Mac am I going to see in the background? Purple okay, bye. kisses. Purple kisses. I, I, I got to love that purple. All right. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Appreciate it so much. All right, everybody. So um, if you're watching right now, you can sync up. We're going to do an audio version of the keynote. I'm just going to be kicking it here. Um, I know some of you might want a little more, but I got to keep my live stream going. So we're going to stick with Apple. They've. It looks like they're starting right now. So let's let's go check it out. We got we got we got the headquarters coming in. But just hang out here and uh come back for the post show. Come back for the post show. You know how we do it. We do it, we do it, we do it. We got like a lot of swooshy lines coming in. It's so swooshy, it's so gooshy. I will bump up the volume once the actual keynote starts, but thanks for coming and hanging out everybody. Appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you. Y'all y'all crazy. Here we go. Hello! Hello and welcome back to Apple Park for our first event of 2021. After the challenges of this past year, we're optimistic that brighter days are just in front of us. As we move forward, we feel it's important that Apple continues to make a difference in people's lives through our products and our values. So we're glad you could Tim join Cook's us today out, for some exciting has been updates and announcements. <laughs> you can tell. This week marks the annual Earth Day celebration. And I couldn't be more proud of the environmental initiatives and commitments we are making at Apple. Today, Apple is carbon neutral for our global corporate operations with all of our offices, stores, and data centers running on 100% renewable energy. And by 2030, Apple will be 100% carbon neutral across our entire end-to-end -end footprint, including our supply chain and the use of our products. 
This month, we launched the Restore Fund in partnership with Conservation International and Goldman Sachs. This pioneering new investment fund will provide returns that are measured not only financially, but by the tons of atmospheric carbon removed by each investment. Our goal is to remove more than 1 million tons of carbon every year. At Apple, our values and principles make us who we are. They drive us to create products and services nice park, that are better, nice easier, and more enjoyable. Now I'd like to turn to some updates on our services, beginning with Apple Card. With Apple Card, we set out to completely reinvent the credit card and enable people to live a healthier financial life. Our customers are loving all the benefits of Apple Card, and we believe it's the most successful credit card launch ever. One of the things that became apparent to us in the beginning was a lack of fairness in the way the industry calculated credit scores. When there were two holders of a credit card, one got the benefit of building a good credit history and the other did not. We want to reinvent the way this works too. So today, we're happy to announce that Apple Card will allow spouses and partners to share and merge their credit lines, have equal rights on their account, and build credit equally. This solution helps deliver financial equity, and it's a game changer. An Apple Card can now be used by anyone in your family over the age of 13 with optional spending limits and controls for kids. We call this set of features Apple Card Family. Aww, These benefits reflect so our cute. ongoing mission to reinvent the credit card and help you and those closest to you experience a healthier financial life. Now let's talk about Apple Podcasts. As you know, Apple helped oh, launch the podcast, the podcast industry 15 years ago. And this is what it looked like. The day we launched podcasts in iTunes, we had 3,000 shows in the directory. Today, there are millions to choose from, and Apple Podcast is the best place to listen to all your favorites. And we're making the biggest change to Apple Podcasts since its debut. Oh, here we this go. This starts with a newly designed Apple Podcasts app. Every show and episode has a beautiful new page, Sweet. making it easy to follow, listen, and share. We're also introducing channels to help you find new shows from your favorite creators. And you'll get recommendations for new channels to explore. We're also introducing Apple Podcast subscriptions, which enables you to unlock new content as well as additional benefits like ad-free listening, early mm -hmm. access, and much more. So now you can help your favorite podcasters build their business and fuel their creativity. Apple Podcast Subscriptions launches in 170 regions and countries next month. These major updates will make listening to podcasts easier and more enjoyable than ever before. Those birds sound nice. Now let's turn to iPhone. iPhone 12 is the most popular smartphone in the world, and people love its amazing features. Super Retina XDR displays with ceramic shield, incredible camera systems and 5G, and of course, they love the stunning design and selection of beautiful colors. And we have another beautiful color, perfect for spring. <laughs> oh, come on. Purple. Who can take Purple. a sunrise? Purple. Yeah! Sprinkle it with dew. <laughs> Cover hey, it in chocolate hey, and a miracle or two. The Candyman. Cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Cause the candy man thinks it should. Purple. We're so excited yes! to introduce oh, a man. new Why gorgeous purple. It looks stunning with the precision milled back glass and new design. It has elements of sophistication and brightness with the color matched man. aluminum edges. It's absolutely beautiful. Purple joins the iPhone 12 lineup for pre-order this Friday. Oh my goodness. And it will be available on April 30th. Send it! One of the things that customers love about the iPhone experience is Find My. And we have some exciting news to share. Here's Carolyn to tell you more. Samsung got their purple BTS phone. Apple got their purple phone. Ooh. Caught up drifting in your rainbow eyes. They're gonna be like, oh, you, have, you played royalty-free music or licensed music, and we're going to take down your live stream. Okay, purple, baby? Come on. Come on. Who's hype? I don't know. 
I get a little too giddy about this, I guess, huh? One of the most helpful features we pioneered is finding your iPhone through Find My. Over time, we made Find My even more powerful. Find My includes a vast end-to-end -end encrypted and anonymous network approaching a billion Apple devices that can help locate a missing iPhone, Apple Watch, iPad, and Mac, even when it's offline. We also open the Find My network so you can use Find My to find third-party products. And this is just the beginning. Today, we're adding to this growing ecosystem with a new iPhone accessory that makes finding things even easier. What is it? Keys. the couch eats your keys, AirTag will help find them. AirTag uses the Find My network so iPhone can help you keep track of and find your things. You can personalize your AirTag to make it your own, even with emoji. AirTag is easy to use by itself emoji! with beautiful accessories we've designed. So you can attach it to just about anything, like your backpack, luggage, or whatever else you have. You can keep track of your AirTag right in the Find My app. Any iPhone with our U1 chip, like iPhone 12, uses helpful overlays to guide you directly to a lost item when it's nearby. We call this precision finding. As you move, precision finding uses our U1 chip to get the precise distance to your AirTag. iPhone fuses that data with input from the camera, accelerometer, and gyroscope to give you visual, haptic, and audible feedback, guiding you right to your AirTag. So sick. At Apple, we believe privacy is a human right, and that's why we designed it into AirTag and the Find My Network. With the Find My Network, everyone can participate without sharing their location to anyone, including Apple. AirTag is designed to track items, not people. So we included safety features to discourage unwanted tracking, like unwanted tag detection, rotating identifiers, and audible alerts from unknown tags. These capabilities are an industry first and are driven by our commitment to privacy. So that's AirTag. AirTag is just $29. Nice. And because you likely have more than one important item in your life, a four pack is just $99. Orders start this Friday and AirTag will be available April 30th. Wow. We also worked with Hermes on a special handcrafted of leather course collection. You did. A bag charm, luggage tag, and key ring, each including an AirTag etched with an Hermes signature. With AirTag and the Find My Network, iPhone can now help you find even more things. And now, back to Tim. Wow. They're coming, they're coming in hot. They're coming in hot. Wow, that's, that, they're coming quick, uh, fast and furious. That's the second announcement. AirTag is just like that. And how Apple we're TV, making the yo. time we spend at home more entertaining and more enjoyable. Apple TV brings you the very best cinematic experience, giving you access to the world's leading video services. This starts with Apple TV Plus and its lineup of critically acclaimed and award-winning Apple originals, including global hit drama, The Morning Show, Academy Award-nominated Wolf Walkers, the Billie Eilish documentary, the Oprah conversation, and of course, the incredibly popular comedy, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso is one of my favorites, and I'm so excited for the second season. So here's a sneak peek at what's coming next. Here we go. Amazing show. 
so. Howdy, y'all. Ted! What do you say to a cocktail, Coach Lasso? Oh, the same thing I'd say to Diane Sawyer if she ever asked me out on a date. Yes, please. <laughs> Live from the dog track, it's Richmond with eight straight ties. How many more best matches shows, one of the best shows the panic area, There's two buttons I never like hitting. That's panic and snooze. I don't care what our record is. It's all about believing that everything's going to work out in the end. Exactly as it's supposed to. And isn't the idea of never give up one of the things we always talk about in sports? And shouldn't that apply to people, too? It's a beautiful metaphor for many of life's journeys. The team's just a little unlucky, that's all. Maybe we should bring in a sports psychologist. Brought you a little something, something for your first day of work here. I don't eat sugar. Really? Oh, come on. I've never met someone on. that doesn't eat sugar. No, she Only that. heard about them. They all live in this godless place called Santa Monica. Sing it! <laughs> we will, we will rock you. You got a fever for the flavor little girl talk, don't you? This chap I've been seeing, John. Stamos? No. His name's John Wings Night. Like at a sports bar, like Monday night's Wings Night down at PJ Flats. Would you please stop? Rule number one, <laughs> even though it's called girl talk, sometimes it needs to be more like girl listen. We will, we will rock you. Amazing show. We will, we will rock you. What's Ted doing? Probably homesick. Closest thing he can find to a Dodge Ram. Woo! Back home, if a team was playing poorly, we don't call them unlucky. What do we call them, Coach? New York Jets. Yeah! July 23rd, baby. Ted Lasso returns this July, and I can't wait. And of course, the best way to enjoy it and everything on Apple TV Plus is with Apple TV 4K. To tell you more about what's new with Apple let's TV go, 4K, let's go, let's go. here's Cindy. What makes my high Apple TV truly unique is its deep integration of Apple hardware, software, and services. Apple TV is built on the same world-class Apple Silicon we put into iPhone. And it runs tvOS, the most powerful TV operating system. Giving Apple TV all this power, power that smart TVs just don't have, lets you magically transform your living room so you can get in your morning workout with He's Apple Fitness like Plus. That. Damn. Show off your school project <laughs> using AirPlay. Battle it out on Apple Arcade. And even sneak in a late night movie with AirPods. The ability to do all of these things and so much more is why we've put so much power into Apple TV. And it's why I'm so excited to share with you the next generation of Apple TV 4K. Apple TV 4K is now built with the A12 Bionic, right. bringing a new level of performance that will be a massive upgrade to your TV. Delivering the highest visual quality possible has always been core to Apple TV. It already supports high dynamic range formats such as Dolby Vision, revealing more realistic colors and greater detail. And with the A12 Bionic, the new Apple TV 4K can now play HDR in high frame rate. This allows video to play more smoothly and appear more lifelike than ever before, which will be great for fast moving action like sports. We're working with leading providers across the globe as they begin to stream in high frame rate HDR. And it's not just professionally produced programs that will look amazing. For those of you with an iPhone 12 Pro, you can already record in Dolby Vision at 60 frames per second. And to enjoy all these moments in the best quality on the new Apple TV 4K, we've enhanced AirPlay to support high frame rate HDR. We want everything you watch on Apple TV to look amazing but because every TV settings are different, it's challenging to know if you're getting the best picture. Until now. With our new color balance feature, Apple TV will work with your iPhone and its advanced sensors to improve your TV's picture quality. Your iPhone uses its camera and proximity sensor to guide you to an on-screen target. Color measurements start automatically. Apple TV uses the light sensor in your iPhone to compare your TV's color balance color to the industry standard specifications used by cinematographers iPhone. worldwide. Using this data, Apple TV will then automatically tailor its video output to compensate for any inaccuracies in your TV's picture settings. So you'll now see much more accurate color without you ever TV having to adjust your TV. The results can be dramatic with more natural colors and improved contrast making your TV look better than ever. Ooh. 
Of course, the way you interact with Apple TV is with the Siri remote. Ugh. So this year, we completely redesigned it with you. new functionality it. and Let's controls. It starts with a new one-piece aluminum design that fits perfectly Buttons. in your hand. And with contrasting controls, you can easily find and hit just the button you want. We, we also buttons. have a brand new click pad with five-way navigation for better accuracy. And the entire click pad is touch enabled, preserving the fast directional swipes users love. And we did something pretty cool with the outer ring. We've given it a new circular gesture that turns it into oh, a jaw control. Wheel, I, perfect I for finding OG just the scene you're looking for. We've also made it the only remote you need for your TV. It now has a power button that controls your TV's Killing power it. and another for mute. And we've moved the Siri button to the side, Killing just like it. on your iPhone. The enclosure is made from 100% recycled aluminum, joining Apple TV 4K and all of our products in furthering our commitment to reducing our environmental impact. So that's the new Apple TV 4K. Wow. It'll be available for $179 with 32 gigabytes or $199 with double the storage capacity. Perfect for enjoying even more apps and games. You can order them on April, April 30th, 30th and they'll be available in the second half of May. With the power of A12 Bionic, the realism of high frame rate HDR, and a totally redesigned Siri remote, the new Apple TV 4K brings the absolute best entertainment experience to your home. Back to Tim. Damn. 20 minutes in, y'all. 20 minutes in. This is loaded. This event's better than I thought. This is, we're not even done, son. Now let's talk about the Mac. Oh. There has never been a more exciting time for the Mac. The Mac. We recently announced that we were embarking on a two-year transition to Apple Silicon, and we're off to an incredible start. The reception to the new MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and Mac Mini with M1 has been mm -hmm. off the charts. Wired called M1 a Mac revolution. M1 delivers incredible performance, custom technologies, and revolutionary power efficiency. With a giant leap in performance per watt, every Mac with M1 is transformed into a completely different class of product. This isn't just an upgrade, it's a breakthrough. Our customers agree as Mac continues to lead the industry in customer satisfaction. And our Mac business has never been stronger. Our M1 products have continued to fuel the Mac's incredible growth and now represent the majority of our Mac sales. Today, M1's profound impact on the Mac continues oh as we are about to take another exciting step forward. <laughs> to tell you more, here's John. Let's go! <laughs> Top at the past five you know? Top is up there. Damn. Are you hyped? I'm hyped. M1 has been a gigantic leap forward for the Mac. It has redefined the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and Mac Mini, shattering expectations of what each of them can do. They've shown how M1 plus Mac OS Big Sur can bring breakthrough performance and power efficiency to the Mac. Users have been absolutely blown away by their responsiveness and amazing battery life. And developers have been busy delivering universal versions of their apps in fact, there are now thousands of universal apps available that take full advantage of M1 and Big Sur, including Photoshop, Twitter, Microsoft Office, Quicken, Slack, Affinity Publisher, Zappos, 1Password, <laughs> and DaVinci Resolve. And there are more arriving every week. I need Premiere. These Macs demonstrate how M1 can dramatically move the Mac forward. But there's even more that it can do. With its system-on-a-chip architecture, Ooh, M1 allows so us to push the Mac far beyond what was previously possible. And that's why we're here. Because today, we're thrilled to introduce oh a Mac my, that oh has my. been built from the ground up around M1. And here it is. Let's go! Holy crap, I'm so juiced. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh! Uh -oh. oh. oh. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. Baby, purple. Oh my 
my god. The all new, completely oh redesigned <laughs> iMac is more personal, more powerful, and more capable than ever. And it's incredible from every those angle. Colors, those colors, it's those colors. bursting with color from both oh the front oh and the back. They did it. They did and it practically disappears when you view it from the side. Oh Let's take God. a look at its revolutionary design. IMAX new form is stunning with a spectrum of vibrant colors. So you can choose the one that fits your own personal style. We wanted it to feel light and optimistic while instantly brightening up any space. From the front, iMac is clean and simple with a single sheet of glass covering the entire surface. The softer colors and light gray borders ground the iMac in your environment and allow you to focus on your content. Oh, oh, in contrast oh, to the more oh. neutral front, the back is designed to really celebrate color with bold, richly saturated shades. Yo. In many places, the That's back of beautiful. iMac, it's the first thing you'll see. So we created colors that would bring a sense of joy to any space. Next, let's check out the striking side profile, where you really see the profound impact of M1. With every generation, iMac has moved closer to our vision to make the computer disappear. Oh and while we've God. had the same great design for several years, we haven't had the technology to take the next big step until now because M1 has enabled us to get closer to that vision than ever before. For comparison, let's take a look at the previous iMac. The logic board thermals stuck? were huge because of the power hungry oh processor. Okay, and the up. CPU, GPU, and other components were all separate chips in the system. Now, with the system on a chip architecture of M1, these are all consolidated into this much smaller logic board. And because M1 is far more power efficient, the bulky thermal system is replaced by just two small fans. This keeps the system cool while running exceptionally quiet. In fact, for typical use, IMAX stays under 10 decibels, which is barely audible to the human ear. Together, these two components help reduce IMAX overall volume by over 50%. The result is a design that's much more compact and just 11.5 millimeters thin. Wow. And with an even smaller footprint, it fits easily into many more spaces. Next, iMac has always been about its best in class display. So on the new iMac, we oh, made the display oh, oh. an expansive 24 inches. Here we go, larger By narrowing display. the borders, we fit the significantly bigger display in a design that's only slightly larger than the 21 and a half inch iMac. I love it, I love it, I love it. I and love it has it. nearly 11.3 million pixels in its four and a half K retina display so you can see your content in all its glorious detail. And with a P3 wide gamut and over a billion colors, plus 500 nits of brightness, every image is brilliant <laughs> and vivid. It also has True Tone, which automatically adjusts the color temperature as your environment changes for a more natural viewing experience. And it has a coating with industry-leading low reflectivity for greater comfort and readability. IMAX new design with its immersive display is awesome and we're just getting started. Oh. We also pushed every other aspect of the experience forward. First, we've taken IMAX camera, mics, and speakers to a whole new level. Yeah, baby. And to tell you more, here's Napreet. This is awesome. Holy crap. We've all been spending more and more time on video calls. So with the new iMac, it was important to us to enhance the core technologies that keep us connected. Let's start with the camera iMac now has a 1080p FaceTime yeah. HD camera, which doubles the resolution for much higher quality video. Ooh, finally. And with a larger sensor, the camera performs great in low light. The camera is paired with M1, which has Apple's latest image signal processor, or ISP. This works to further enhance the image quality with computational video. Let's take a look at the processing pipeline. As you use the camera, the ISP goes through a series of steps to analyze and enhance each pixel at over a trillion operations per second. For example, it works with M1's neural engine to make more intelligent exposure and white balance adjustments, so your lighting is always just right. It utilizes advanced noise reduction algorithms to bring a new level of clarity to your video. And it uses tone mapping to deliver enhanced dynamic range, bringing more detail to bright highlights and dark shadows. This camera will make you look like a rock star. In fact, it's the best camera we've ever put in a Mac. And to complement the camera, 
we gave iMac a studio quality three mic array. The mics are engineered to reduce feedback from the rest of the system, like so laptops. conversations flow more naturally and you'll interrupt each other less. And beamforming allows these mics to better ignore background noise and focus on your voice, which means you'll come through loud and clear on video calls or when recording an audio track. This is also the best mic system yep. ever in a Mac. Yep. Now, nice. with this amazing camera and mic array, you know we leveled up the speakers too. To create big, room-filling sound, speakers need to displace a lot of air. In order to do this, we increased the power driving the iMac sound system. Now, while iMac needed to have big sound, it also had to deliver accurate sound. So we gave it two pairs of force-canceling woofers that produce an incredible bass response while reducing unintended vibrations from that increased power. And we balanced each set with a high-performance tweeter. The result is a six-speaker system that produces a massive soundstage with strong, articulate bass and crystal clear mids and highs. All of these speaker innovations, coupled with advanced algorithms, enable iMac to support spatial audio when playing video with Dolby Atmos. On the beautiful 4.5K Retina display, yeah. it's an outstanding movie watching oh experience. Gosh. With its dramatic improvements in balance, vocal clarity, and instrument separation, iMac delivers a remarkably robust and high quality audio experience. Simply put, it's the best sound system ever in a Mac, and we can't wait for you to hear it. Back to you, Colleen. Woo! With this these so camera hype. and audio features so and its stunning display, iMac delivers an entirely new level of capability. Cool denim jumpsuit. Now, add in the power and performance of M1 and Mac OS Big Sur, this experience Big is sir. simply unrivaled. You can feel the difference immediately as iMac wakes almost instantly. And your apps launch with blazing speed. <laughs> oh, man. Everything you do on Mac OS Big Sur is extremely responsive. And the apps you use every day are fast and fluid. Like in Safari, you can browse even faster and run hundreds of tabs at once. In Photos, you can fly through edits to your iPhone images. And in Apple Arcade, Gaming on iMac is better than ever. So 24 with inch awesome right now. We don't know about a larger games, display yet. Like Warp Drive. So we know that. M1 delivers so much great performance, you can even keep playing while simultaneously taking your People next game. wears an all black iMac. Uh, and with powerful make a creative apps optimized eventually. for M1, it's easier than ever to explore your passion. So be patient. Or find a new one. When it comes to CPU performance trim, and apps though. like Xcode, Lightroom, so and iMovie, iMac is up to 85% faster than the previous 21 and a half inch iMac models. So you can compile new apps in Xcode in a fraction of the time. Easily work with massive 100 megapixel photos in Lightroom and export your favorite video projects in iMovie faster than ever. And when it comes to GPU performance, for certain apps like Affinity Photo and Photoshop, iMac is up to two times faster than the previous models. And it's even up to 50% faster than the most powerful discrete graphics in the fastest 21 and a half inch iMac. So you can render edits to your next brilliant Bruce. composition in real time with Affinity Photo. Look how beautiful that thing is. Or though. quickly That's transform so a picture into an oil painting with Photoshop. And in Final Cut Pro, you can edit up to five streams of 4K footage or one stream of 8K footage without dropping a frame. And machine learning is now up to three times faster in apps that leverage M1's 16-core neural engine. So apps like Vectornator, which can swiftly turn a photo into vector layers, get even faster <laughs> on iMac. Sick. And because iMac has the same chip architecture as iPhone and iPad, you can run iPhone and iPad apps like Headspace and Zillow right on your iMac without breaking your workflow. Or you can enjoy games like Sky, Children of the Light, We're 30 while you minutes spread in, out on iMac and use this your keyboard crazy. as a game controller. Crazy. And with iCloud and continuity, it's easier than ever to use iMac and iPhone together. Your calls and texts come right to iMac. So no need to switch devices when you're in the zone. Apple just leveled up, And that email you started on iPhone, you can use Handoff to finish it on iMac. And you can even copy text and images on iPhone and then paste them right into a document on iMac with the magic of Universal Clipboard. And all your content is always available and up to date across all your Apple devices. You are going to love the combination of M1 and Mac OS on the do. new iMac. It's the ultimate Big Sur experience. Man, look at that fit. And Sick. we're not done yet. What? iMac has state-of-the-art connectivity for all your data and devices. Purple! It has Purple. up to four USB-C ports, including Woo! two Thunderbolt ports for super-fast data transfer. 
and support for up to a 6K display, like oh the Pro god, Display XDR. I hope, I hope, oh my god, I need the purple one. I and we created a new power connector that attaches magnetically, so it's quick and easy to connect. Yo, fabric wrap. It has a two meter oh, color match on. woven cable that leads to a it's small power sexy. adapter, which can be placed on the floor behind your desk. Apple, you're too sexy right and now. And for ethernet, check out this cool innovation. It connects to the adapter and runs what? through the power cable to oh, keep so your desktop to less cluttered. Now, let's take a closer look at IMAX's new keyboard, mouse, and ooh, trackpad ooh, options. Yeah, oh yeah. You can choose from three types of keyboards with gorgeous aluminum enclosures, match color. color matched to IMAX. First, there's a magic keyboard with new emoji, spotlight, dictation, and do not disturb keys. And a lock key to instantly lock IMAX. Next, there's a magic keyboard with an exciting new feature. Touch ID, which comes to the Mac desktop for the first time. Yeah. Wireless fingerprint data transmission is made possible by a secure processor in the keyboard. It communicates directly with the secure enclave and M1, creating an encrypted channel to protect your fingerprint data from end to end. So whether you're making a purchase with Apple Pay Purple. or unlocking your iMac, it's fast, easy, and secure. And Touch ID also works with fast user switching, so you can change to a different user profile with just the touch of a finger. And there's a magic keyboard with Touch ID and a numeric keypad too. Magic Mouse, loved by iMac <laughs> users, now features color matched aluminum. Oh my goodness. And Magic Trackpad, still by far the industry's best, has a refined shape to match the new keyboard. These new accessories complete the system and bring even more capability to iMac. Unreal, unreal. With a colorful, cutting edge design, best in class features, the power of M1 and Mac OS Big Sur, the new <laughs> iMac can do it all dynamically transforming These any space into whatever you need it to be. Let's take a look at the many ways iMac can fit into your life. Let's, if it's in my life right Say now. Say hello to the new iMac. You've never seen a computer like this before. Yeah, it's really that thin, but it's not magic. It's the M1 chip, which is kind of magic. And it makes the new iMac fast. Like your apps open instantly fast. Like check that text while you clean your inbox, while you share that photo, while you stream that show fast. That's fast. It has a 4.5K retina display for colors that pop off the screen. Give me purple, give me purple. A 1080p camera. So you'll look right in any light. And whether you're talking to one person or a hundred, so the mics always focus on your voice. I'm so hyped. So they hear you, <laughs> not what's around you. Six speakers and Dolby Atmos means everything you do sounds great. Matching keyboard and mouse and wireless touch ID. Boom, boom, boom. And what happens on your iPhone also happens on your iMac. That's definitely magic. This is the new iMac. Oh wait, I forgot. It comes in seven colors. <laughs> With iMac, the possibilities are endless. iMac Pro has to be coming, And guys, like so all of our products, iMac has been built to minimize Relax. its impact on the environment. 100% of the virgin wood fiber in iMac's packaging comes from responsibly managed forests. And iMac has 100% recycled rare earth magnets in the speakers, fan motor, and power connector. And of course, iMac meets Apple's high standards for environmental responsibility in materials, renewable energy, and energy efficiency. So that's the new iMac. With its extraordinary design, powerful performance, and incredible features, it starts at just $12.99 in four colors. And at $14.99, iMac comes in seven colors with these additional features. You can order the new iMac starting April 30th, and it will be available in the second half of May. The new iMac is the first Mac completely redesigned around the revolutionary M1 chip. With a 24-inch, 4.5K Retina display, the best camera mics and speakers ever in a Mac, Mac OS Big Sur, and Touch ID. iMac is the most personal, powerful, capable, and simply the most fun it's ever been. We can't wait to see what you do on iMac. Damn. And now back to John. Damn. The new iMac joins MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and Mac Mini in our incredible family of M1 Macs. And with the new iMac, the strongest lineup of Macs we've ever had gets even better. The new iMac is another huge step forward in our transition to Apple Believe Silicon. A larger screen Pro and it brings the amazing M1 the experience to even more Mac users. But it's not just Mac users who want to get their hands on it. What? What? Apple 
What are you doing? What are you cooking here? chip is not just in the Mac, <laughs> it's now in iPad Pro, and it's going to blow you away. Damn, this is sick. iPad Pro has always used turbocharged versions of our A-series chips to deliver a powerful and responsive experience that's years ahead of anything else. M1 continues that momentum by taking it to an entirely new level, with a big jump in performance to run powerful apps and drive a high-performance oh, ecosystem. Gonna do, we're gonna do app For M1 to fit into its incredibly thin and light design requires power efficiency that's way beyond just being better. It has to be amazing, and M1 delivers. And because M1 shares the same fundamental architecture right. of A-series chips, iPadOS is already built to take full advantage of its powerful technology. The next level performance that M1 unlocks on iPad Pro starts with its powerful CPU. Yeah. Built around the world's fastest CPU core and low power silicon, the eight core design of M1 delivers a whopping 50% jump over the industry leading performance of the previous iPad Pro. What's amazing is that compared to the first generation iPad, this iPad Pro now it's delivers up to 75 times faster CPU performance. It's no wonder apps are pushing the limits of what's possible on iPad. From blazing performance for vector and raster tools in Affinity Designer, to rendering the most detailed designs with Shaper what about 3D, the apps, baby? What about the app? to Wait, adding complex effects to 4K iPhone? videos in LumaFusion. Oh, oh, Luma iPad's like, expansive display comes bursting to life with M1's amazing graphics performance. The eight core GPU is in a class of its own, delivering up to 40% faster graphics performance. Again, Compared to the first generation iPad, get ready for this. The graphics of this new iPad oh Pro is now God. over 1,500 times faster. Oh That's God. just ridiculous. So painting with watercolors and oils in Adobe Fresco look and feel like the real thing. Good Lord. And you can bring the most intricate AR models into the real world with Jigspace. You can also play the latest games with console quality graphics at super high frame rates. This raw performance, along with the ProMotion so display, going on four here. speakers, and now support for the latest PlayStation or Xbox game controllers with haptics makes playing games on iPad Pro insanely fun. With this combination of CPU and graphics performance, the new iPad Pro is, yet again, the fastest device of its kind. It's not even close. But it's bigger than that, because powerful custom technologies like our latest 16-core Apple Neural Engine, advanced image signal processor, and unified high bandwidth memory architecture make iPad Pro more capable than ever. And the industry-leading power efficiency of M1 enables all of that amazing performance along oh, with so all-day battery pretty. life in the incredibly thin and light design of iPad Pro. The new iPad Pro also allows users to access their content faster than ever 
with up to two times faster storage. And for our most demanding users, a new Boom. two terabyte configuration give me the apps, gives you though. enormous give me the apps. storage capacity. So you can keep up to 60,000 pro raw photos at your fingertips or up to 220 hours of 4K HDR video content with you Game wherever you go. Spring. Game changer, Apple. M1 brings much faster connectivity to iPad Pro as well. The USB-C port already supports super fast data transfers. And now yep. we're adding Thunderbolt with USB 4 support as well, Ooh. making it the fastest, most versatile port ever on an iPad or any other device of its kind. Not only is there four times more bandwidth for wired connections up to 40 gigabits per second, Thunderbolt also opens up a massive ecosystem of high performance accessories, like super fast storage, external displays like the Pro Display XDR now at its full 6K resolution, Woo! and all connected using high performance Yo. cables and docks. Yo. iPad Pro now fits perfectly into so many more workflows. Now, on a mobile device like iPad Pro, Ultra-fast like wireless connections now. are absolutely critical, and that's why we've added 5G to iPad Pro. 5G just Accessing got real. files, collaborating with colleagues, and backing up data are fundamental when you're on the go. This is Looks huge. Good already. Looks hot. Super fast 5G cellular connections lets users be creative yeah, and productive the San Francisco Bay. wherever they are. Let's be real. Download That's speeds can be as high as 3.5 gigabits per second That's in ideal happening. conditions. Of course, 5G speeds will vary by carrier and region. In the US, iPad Pro also supports millimeter wave, the high frequency version of 5G. And with this model, iPad Pro can reach up to four gigabits per second peak download speeds in ideal conditions. So no matter where your work takes you, you can live stream from wherever you are. This is Aishwarya reporting from San Francisco. First off, I want to congratulate everybody on- And you never have to miss a meeting on your way to work. I was on mute, sorry. Uh, I want to congratulate- The blazing speeds of 5G allow you to do just about anything, just about anywhere. And there's more. iPad's versatility is further enhanced by its pro cameras. And to tell you more, here's Fiona. New cameras. Customers love taking stunning photos and videos on their iPad. And with powerful apps, these advanced cameras enable so, so good, much more. Like video capture for mobile journalists and content creators. That's a picture from last year's iPad. Especially with the built-in <laughs> studio quality mics on iPad Pro. And with the LiDAR scanner, they paved the way to completely new workflows. Like motion tracking with CamTrack AR. Super accurate depth data makes going from green screen Damn. to pre-visualization on location easier than ever. And you can build that final render with greater confidence. Or how designers and architects visualize their projects with Archi. On site, at full scale, complete with people occlusion, realistic shadows, and real-time lighting. I mean, or to simply bring your imagination to that. life. Check out this new version of Clips which uses the LiDAR scanner to transform your living room into a magical space for your next video. Okay, How fun is okay. that? And with the more powerful ISP and M1, that? we got Smart HDR3, where the ISP and HDR the neural engine the yes. work together yes. to adjust color, contrast, and noise in distinct parts of a photo. And in low light conditions, the ISP and LiDAR scanner quickly and accurately focus images and videos to capture incredible details from almost no light at all. On the front, the True Depth camera instantly and securely unlocks iPad with Face ID and takes portrait selfies, which look amazing on that large display. And now, more than ever, it plays an important role when collaborating with coworkers really and connecting like with family and friends. So, Smoother. in the new iPad Pro, we're going to take a huge step forward by updating the True Depth camera system to include an all new ultra wide camera designed specifically for iPad. It features a new 12 megapixel sensor with a 122 degree field of view, which enables something really cool. And we call it Center Stage. Oh, let's, okay, Center okay. Stage uses the new ultra wide camera and machine learning to recognize and keep you in the center of the view. What's amazing is as you move around, it automatically pans to keep Ooh, you in the shot. Okay, okay, and that's okay. not all. When others join in, it recognizes them too and zooms out to fit everyone into the Yo, view. This is, so whether oh it's a whiteboarding goodness. session with coworkers I or a family get-together, the experience of connecting is now more engaging <laughs> than ever. 
So that's the new ultra wide camera with center stage. Video calls never look so good. Now, back to Raja. Sold. iPad is a magical sheet of glass that can become anything you want magical it to be. Sheet of glass. And the centerpiece of that experience iPad. on iPad Pro is its stunning liquid retina display, which features a long list of advanced iPad. display technologies, many that we've pioneered on iPad. We introduced it as the world's most advanced mobile display. The Liquid Retina display delivers nearly 4 million pixels on the 11-inch iPad Pro. Users love being able to take the most powerful iPad experience with them everywhere in a portable one-pound design. On the immersive 12.9-inch iPad Pro, it delivers an enormous 5.6 million pixels. This is for those who want the biggest window for their creative workflows. And we have some exciting news here. Oh, it's all exciting. We know going, our users are increasingly creating content with the high brightness and high contrast ratio HDR, of HDR. Let's go, baby. So Bring it back. we first equipped creative users with the Pro Display XDR to view and edit their content. Oh, this on. amazing display delivers extremely high brightness and an extremely high contrast ratio. And now we're going to take the next big step. We're bringing the stunning front of screen performance of our Pro Display XDR to our 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Okay. So our users can take their XDR workflow wherever they go. Damn. This is the new Liquid Retina XDR display. Okay. And it delivers a thousand nits of full screen Holy brightness, shizzle. a breathtaking 1600 nits of peak brightness, and a phenomenal oh. one million to one contrast ratio, oh. just like Pro Display XDR. Oh my God. Now, due to the ultra thin design of iPad Pro compared to the Pro Display XDR, we had to take an entirely new approach to make this happen. So, to tell you all about it, here's <laughs> Heidi. This is sick! Holy Extreme shit. Dynamic Range is all about delivering a visual experience that reflects what we see in the real world. This means seeing the brightest highlights along with subtle details in the darkest parts of an image. Bringing the XDR experience to iPad Pro was an enormous challenge. We had to rethink how the display creates light. So we went back to the drawing board. To achieve way higher brightness, we used an array of LEDs across the entire back of the display, similar to the Pro Display XDR. And to fit within the like ultra thin LED iPad displays? Pro design, these LEDs need to be incredibly small. So we developed a mini LED, which is over 120 times smaller in volume than the previous design. And because these mini LEDs are so small, achieving extremely high brightness requires lots of them. And I mean thousands of them. In fact, there are over 10,000 LEDs that deliver XDR level brightness on that stunning 12.9 inch display. That's a massive increase over the 72 LEDs that were in the previous iPad Pro. We then grouped these mini LEDs into over 2,500 local dimming zones. So depending on the content, we can precisely adjust the brightness in each zone. Not the result even, is an extremely high one million to one zones. contrast ratio. The light is then shaped by a series of incredibly thin, custom designed optical films and diffusers. And that's why this display can fit into a design that's just 6.4 millimeters thin, weighs just 1.5 pounds, and <laughs> so still sick. delivers all day battery life. So HDR content with the finest specular highlights like galaxies and star fields is more true to life than ever. We're thrilled to deliver the XDR experience on the new iPad Pro. Back to Raja. There's never been a display that delivers this kind of visual experience on any other mobile device. So users can now do things they could never do before. Videographers have a large XDR display they can take yes, with them yes. everywhere and edit true to life HDR content using LumaFusion. Photographers can see even more Cup detail Pro. when Final editing Cup their Pro. images right on iPad using Lightroom. And filmmakers can more confidently review and approve HDR content with Frame.io, previewing it as it's meant to be seen from anywhere on the set. And everyone can enjoy a mobile cinematic viewing and listening experience with support for HDR video formats Hello. like HDR10, HLG, and Dolby Vision and the advanced sound system supports Dolby Atmos as well. So this is our new 12.9 inch Liquid Retina XDR display. With this amazing set of features, it goes beyond any display in the world. And we couldn't wait to put the new iPad Pro with all of its advanced new technologies in the hands of our developers.
Check out what happened when we did. All right. I'm Natasha. Sahar. I'm Gao Yunzhong. Guys, you can call me Bobby. Josh. Shannon Bullock. David William Hay. Professional astro geek. I'm Terry Morgan. And I'm from Lima Fusion. Swing Vision. Procreate filmmaker pro. All right, Ziggy, you ready for your big shot? Divinity Original Sin 2. iPad. iPad. iPad Pro. And now the iPad Pro has the M1. How can I put this? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that head exploding emoji. Eureka. When I think of M1 on the iPad, there are truly no limits to what's possible creatively. The power that's there. It's a monster. We can do more. We can make bigger canvases, and we can do way more with our brushes. Art has left the glass, and it's now in a totally different realm. Processing power is insane. Audio transcription lets you put the iPad Pro on your piano and just start playing, and that'll transcribe into notation what you've just played. Pretty wild. With M1, the iPad Pro can now be your tennis coach and your line judge. It can look 100 feet across the court and determine if a ball is in or out. In. For the first time, the iPad Pro allows us to take the world's densest open-world RPG and put it on a device that can really be played anywhere. We never had that before. Ah, this is very, very exciting. In one hour, it can't happen before. The display is everything. It just says yes. Yes, you can see the full spectrum of color. All of that is huge to us. It kind of showcases a new level of detail with 3D that you couldn't quite see before. It's just such a beautiful big window to be able to hold up and zoom in and see whatever you want. Like you're controlling the Hubble Space Telescope yourself. The biggest deal is really fast, direct import with Thunderbolt. I can get my large images in Photoshop on the iPad faster than ever. And once they're in there, I can just edit in real time. We're able to do things on this new iPad Pro that we've never been able to do before. To know that it's all there and just something that you're holding in your hand. Fun. How can you not be just overwhelmingly excited about that? We are so, so, so excited. This is going to be a big deal. You nailed it. Good job. <laughs> We're always amazed by the new capabilities our developers put in the hands of our users. Of course, you can't talk about iPad Pro and not talk about the phenomenal accessories that make it even more versatile and capable. New Apple Pencil transforms iPad Pro into an immersive drawing canvas and the world's best note-taking device by far. And Scribble, now with support for five additional languages, wow. allows you to write in any text field, so you never have to put Apple Pencil away. And iPad Pro supports the thin and light smart keyboard folio and the Magic Keyboard with its backlit keys. Integrated trackpad and floating design. Not only is it a great typing experience, it's now also available in a gorgeous new white color. Finally,、Ooh. iPad Pro has been carefully designed to minimize、What? its impact on the environment and support our overall net zero carbon goal. It uses 100% recycled aluminum for the entire enclosure and 100% recycled rare earth elements in the magnets of the speakers and enclosure. iPad Pro is also free of a long list of harmful substances. Our work here is never finished, but we're proud of the progress we've made. Even with M1 and the other incredible new technologies, the 11-inch iPad Pro still starts at just $799, and the 12.9-inch model adds the stunning Liquid Retina XDR display for just $1099, an incredible value for such an incredible device. You can order iPad Pro starting April 30th. And it'll be available in the second half of May. We're so excited about the new iPad Pro. Damn! Check this out. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. Five, four, three, two, one.
looking amazing. Oh, look at that all white everything. Oh. This is the new 11-inch oh and 12.9-inch iPad Pro. So pretty, Both so feature the breakthrough so M1 chip, making each the fastest device of its kind. Thunderbolt for connection to high-performance accessories, the ultra-wide front camera with center stage, and 5G on cellular models for the fastest cellular connections possible. And in addition to all of that, the 12.9-inch model features the stunning Liquid Retina XDR display with 1,600 nits of peak brightness and a million to one contrast ratio. This is a display you have to see to believe. Oh, I'm gonna see it. This I'm is a, I believe the it. most <laughs> outrageously capable and versatile iPad Damn. Pro we've ever made. It's so beautiful. Back to John. Yo, we're just an hour in. In I'm every insane. way, this is like, a this giant is leap forward what for a iPad. Crazy keynote. The new iPad Pro joins the rest of our incredible Damn. lineup and pushes the iPad experience even further. iPad Pro and iMac have always delivered a best-in-class user experience, and M1 takes both to the next level Apple with its profound things. impact on their design and things. capability. Now back to Tim. What a freaking keynote, y'all. This is amazing. So much to talk about. We'll do it all, we'll do it all. But man. And I feel Funny how AirTags has got like, Three minutes, like, oh, here's their tax. Oh, we got what real a good great stuff day of announcements. We continue our reinvention Dude, swole, of the credit Timmy? card with Apple Card Family. Don't talk about no Apple As well Card as a family. major redesign okay. of Apple Podcasts. <laughs> we announced an all new, yeah. beautiful purple oh, finish for Lord, iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 mini. Oh, yeah, AirTag. The new to AirTag to help you find the important things in your life. The new Apple TV 4K and redesigned Siri remote bring the absolute best that's, entertainment experience that's already, that's to your home. Right there. The incredible oh, new man. iMac that completely reinvents one of the world's most iconic Spring computers. Freaking loaded. And the new iPad Pro with the M1 chip, oh, which is an absolute sick. powerhouse. At Apple, pictures. we continue to be committed to making an impact in people's lives. And we can't wait to get these new products into your hands and see all of the amazing things you'll do with them. Thank you for being with us today. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great day. Woo! Oh my God. That was crazy, everybody. That was crazy. Uh, that might be one of the best keynotes that we have seen in the past, geez, two, three years. I mean, they said spring loaded. It was spring loaded. So let's let's get y'all queued up here. We have the phone lines open. Um, you can see it down here. Well, I'll stick on here for maybe about half an hour to an hour at the most, just because I have actually other things to do, right? But um, that was. I'm I'm kind of speechless. I'm I'm so hyped after that. So, what we're gonna do here is just get caught up with a few things. I'm gonna get my ducks in a row. Um, I know you all have so many things to say about that, but. Off the top of my head, 15 minutes into the keynote, we had already seen AirTags. We had already seen a purple iPhone 12. We had already seen an Apple TV. And at the 20-minute mark, we were just getting into IMAX. And that was bonkers. You know how much I love purple? They listen to me. I feel like they watch my... They don't. I mean, I know actually they do watch some of my stuff. I know it for a fact, but... I got my purple. I got my purple kisses. This is amazing. Okay, so look, enough about me. We want to hear how you all felt about this. Again, I'll call it right now one of the best keynotes that we have seen in a long time. Um, so let's get to the calls. The phone line's already freaking filled up. We were at like two people. They're all loaded up. Let's get to people who've been waiting the longest. I have a call coming into us from the 562 area code. If you could um, just chime in. I don't, I don't know your name, but let me know how you feel. Hey, Brian. It's Who? Bill. How you doing today, man? What's up? Thank you so much for calling. Uh, thank you for your patience. Let's get right to it. What did you think about the event? And we have so many people calling. What was your favorite thing you saw here today? Well, first off, I want to say your reaction to the freaking purple iPhone was something. <laughs> that was Bro, crazy. It was, so, it was so pretty. I was like, I can't buy a purple iPhone. I'm going to stay away from it. But um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, so Maybe someone's going to love me this year. I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, please go ahead. It, this floor is yours, my friend. Yeah, I mean, like, Keto was crazy. I mean, finally we get air tags after what, like, almost two years of it being like not known. Yeah. So I'm glad we finally got that. And plus, the price point's pretty good. I mean, twenty nine dollars for one, hundred dollars for four of them. I, I mean, but 
the question is though, is that just with like just the tags or is there going to be like a separate band that comes with it? Cause I don't know exactly how it goes on to my keys if it's just the tags. Well, you know, they, but other than that, like yeah. that's just me nitpicking about it. Well, they, you know, they showed off that Hermes band um, or like keychain as- attachment, which is probably I'm gonna guess be at least a hundred dollars at least. Um, they will have other. They they showed off other uh, third party like kind of Apple branded keychain uh, attachments. So we'll see how they attach to other things. You know, we had heard things about. Look, I'm like I was like grabbing my hair all over the place, but we've heard other things about uh, potential like a pet collar attachment and things like that. But there will be accessories 100. percent We're just gonna have to wait and see. But I mean, 29 dollars to your point. Look, Samsung just announced their own Smart Tags Plus. They priced them at 39.99. Apple priced their Apple. Um, Air tags at twenty nine ninety nine. I think that's one of the biggest surprises of the show, other than the things that we saw. So, uh, you know, I'll definitely get one. I don't think I still need a bunch, and the bundle is good for families. Uh, but th- look, they only spent like three minutes tops on the air tags, which is what was funny to me. I'm like, whoa, we're like blowing through this. This must be spring loaded in. Damn, it was. So, <laughs> thank you so much for calling. Really appreciate. It. We're just gonna keep on yeah. getting to the call so people can talk and call in. All right. All right. Awesome. Still waiting for the- oh no, he he just I just hung up. I'm so sorry. Okay, <laughs> I'm juiced. Let's go to Christopher. What's up, Christopher? Welcome back, my friend. Oh hey hey, uh, um, right? Is it, it? Am I speaking to you? You are talking to me. If you turn down the volume on your live stream once the call gets through, then you won't be confused by hearing me there and then here and then you know I'll be all up in your ear and stuff like that. Oh, for sure, dude. Oh, yeah. No, um, actually, I called earlier too, so, but I wanted to see. Um, why? Well, like I said, I was just like geeking out, and I and I and I really wanted to talk more about the the new iMac that came out, and that fucked my life. Oh I was like, oh, excuse me. God. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like they were so beautiful, colorful. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. Let me, let me, let me, let me articulate myself a little bit better for <coughs> all the kids out there. Um, but yeah, sorry, you were saying. No, no, I'm just saying that was um. The, the fact that, okay, so I was, IMAX, they're, you know, the colors they put out there, super rich and vibrant. You know, I was worried it might be more of like the pastel setup, but they went in on it. Now, I think people are complaining, at least they might complain that the border of the IMAX are white instead of maybe matching the, the aluminum edge. And, you know, me being, you know, kind of anal like that, I would have liked to see the border around the frame of the screen match. But this also tells me that there is going to be some sort of a Mac iMac pro that comes out this year with a faster processor. We, you know, we don't have the kind of the classy silver and space gray models. And the fact that they kind of really lean into these light, bright, vibrant colors that are also um, with a white border tells me we're going to see most likely an iMac pro later this year with a faster processor and the IMAX themselves are just beasts, but you know, mm-hmm. there's some might be people that are more on the uh, content creation side that even though you don't want to wait, you might want to wait and see what they come out this year. But I thought the, the IMAX and the iPad announcements were gangbusters. I mean, who, who's going to, what other mm-hmm. tablet can compete with the iPad other than you just don't want to be in the ecosystem. I can't name any single one. Right yeah, now. definitely dude. No, I mean like, honestly, uh, well, I'm already in the ecosystem. Like, I'm just gonna admit to it right now. Like, but and I'm really upset what happened with the HomePod. You know, I have one right now, and I wish it was way better. You know, I'm trying to figure out why it doesn't necessarily want to work with my voice. It's just like trying to like convert all the sounds. I think that it hears, and I think that's really one of the software issues that the HomePod really needs to address. But I love my HomePod sound though. Um, and speaking on about the iPad, uh, dude, I don't think anybody can compare honestly right now. Like, I, I mean, I see Samsung with their displays and all that. But uh, I and I see like iPad in the back as far as like, you know, upgrading their uh, what is it? GPU speed and all that, um, like how the graphics and their uh, gigahertz, how fast they go. Um, I see them like just like trail along, but uh, it's definitely going to pick up once, you know, that M1 chip starts like, oh, dude, I, I can't even like, oh, my gosh, I get so excited. dude. Like the iMac, the colors themselves just get me because I just like I like being a fashionable guy, dude. You know, and um, all the colors <laughs> and you, just and get you and me. I speak you know, the same language, man. Color, colors are important. Colors matter, my man. Yeah. Colors matter, my man. Oh, dude, for sure. I love that, dude. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you got me, man. Ah, dude. Well, I mean, like, that's all really uh, I wanted to say. You know, I wanted to geek set up. 
you know, I don't, I don't want to take a lot of time. Maybe some other people want to talk to, but um, thank you so much, you know, for having me on the air. Hey, no problem. Thank you so much for calling and being a part of the show. I mean, I really appreciate everyone that's a part of this. I mean, we're, we're, we're going pretty strong right now with people that just want to talk shop. We're, we're at, what, 4,400 people coming here to hang out. So let's keep on banging through oh this. And I know it's pretty wild, right? So thank you, everyone, who has come back here uh, to hang out. Sorry if the call software just showed some. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, like, multitasking here. Yeah. But all right. So let's go um, to our next caller. It looks like I'm talking to potentially Abel. Abel, are you there? Welcome to the show. Oh my God! Hey Brian, how's it going? What's up? What's up? Um, okay, let's get into this. <laughs> this is wild. I think there's yeah. a lot of energy and excitement around what we just saw. I've never, I don't, I can't remember seeing an Apple event this jam packed with this many products and top tier quality stuff at every level for what they're doing right now. There is no tablet on planet Earth right now that can compete with the iPad Pro. There's there's nothing. There's nothing out there like it. Absolutely. Quite honestly, that center stage thing I, where it tracks you with the camera, like that's useful. <laughs> I saw that. I was sold before I even saw the liquid retina XDR display. So yes. um, amazing, amazing stuff. And it also kind of gives us a hint, a peek into what they might do from a home consumer standpoint. We've heard that they were flirting or working on this idea of a iPad Pro on a HomePod type device, much like an Amazon Echo Show uh, 10, which has a screen mm -hmm. that can track you. Well, we see it in the iPad now. They can they can take this technology on all their devices eventually. So enough of me talking. Let's hear from you. What was the <laughs> thing that stuck out to you the most? Um, honestly, like just to hearken on that center stage, I feel like it was a kind of a they were a, a dig at Facebook because of their Facebook <laughs> portal. Uh, their whole design was around you know trying to follow you and whatnot. But this is more of a subtle, more of a professional look to it. So I think that's really cool. But I think, honestly, the thing that took the cake today was the iMac, honestly. Uh, just seeing that and the design that they kind of um, felt like they were inspired by the iPad Pro, but kind of bringing that to the iMac. So I think that's really cool. Um, but I think my favorite moment of the entire keynote was uh, <laughs> Tim Cook being uh, – uh, James Bond for a minute. So. Hey, hey, man. I mean, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Tim Cook been working out. I mean, quarantine. Like, so there's this. There's this. Like, look, we are not body shaming anyone here, so let's get that out of the way. But there was a time no. where he, Tim Cook. There was a a time where he was looking a little more doughy, and I think he took that to mm -hmm. heart. Someone Marby said, "Hey, hey, hey, Tim, you need you need you need to get cooking in the gym, my friend." Uh, he was looking a little more shouldery and and more like swollish. I mean, he might have done twenty push ups before Listen. the shoot because hey, people do that, okay? But um, that, that was... fitness plus works. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, body weight. Hey, hey, I don't know what is he juicing. I don't know, but uh, whatever he's do whatever he's doing is definitely working. Um, was there anything? Yeah. I know you talked about IMAX and iPads. Uh, was there anything that yeah. may have surprised you the most at this keynote personally? Uh, honestly, AirTags. I didn't expect them to announce it in this keynote, but it was a pleasant surprise, honestly. I'm pretty much planning on getting at least one for my, uh, for my keys because I keep losing those, but yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, like, I'm actually trying to I look at – um, I'm trying to find on the site where they actually place AirTags because, like, you know, Apple has their product navigation. Mm. Um, okay, AirTags mm. are in the iPhone section of the uh, of the Apple website. So for those of you that are looking, um, you can just find them in there. I was like, you know, they're supposed to be about the size of a bottle cap, say half dollar or more like a half dollar size. Um, I loved how they actually have a really killer interface that kind of, it's like a, it's a tracker and, and you know, it's, to find yeah. it, it's kind of like walking around with like your sensor and stuff. So with your phone, so um, really cool stuff. But I'm gonna, you know, Thank you so much for calling. I'm going to I'm going to actually get back Absolutely. to the, rest of the there's so many people here that I just want to talk and let it all out. So I'm I'm here to help y'all let it all out, all right? Thanks so much for calling Abel. Really appreciate Go it. Go for it. All thanks right. for thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. All right. Let's get to our next friend here on the show. Looks like um the name Whoops, what's going on here? Okay. If you can hear me, Oops, give me a second, guys and gals. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, give me a sec. The Skype is like trying to handle all of the calls. So I'm going to we did this in the pre-show. I'm going to dial in and then we'll let's let me get also while we're here. 
We got the chat. Okay, give me a second, everybody. I'm going to dial back into the call software just to get all of our friends who are waiting patiently to talk uh, and just kind of like hash this all out to get in here. So give me one moment. This is how we make the sausage. It's a little bit of old school dialing. But I'd love to hear for those of you who are in the chat also, um, just call. I'd love to see on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate this keynote? Because, I mean, I'm juiced about this. To me, it's a 10. Man, it might even be in higher than that. And I'm not saying it because like I'm in the fog, but think about everything that they just threw down. You know, they've been sitting on this for a while. So. Thank you for calling Colin Studios host and call screener line. Okay. Just be patient, my friends. Enter your six-digit PIN number. Top secret. Welcome, host. You are now in the host room and can manage your callers from the Colin Studio web interface. Okay, so let's show some love here to our chat because um, our chat also is, is like a key part of this. So if I go here on our screen, we got, just to show some love to you all, I asked, you know, what do you, what do you think about this rating? Jash Verma, not impressed, gives it a six. Am Anis gives it a five. Biba67, eight out of 10. I'm seeing Digator gives it a 10. Mikkel Christensen, a 10. So we got a mix of actually like 10s and sixes we got eights nines we got a 12.9 i get it five seven one mark miller mark miller giving the keynote a one what'd you come here for did you come here to pile on this is not a one that's crazy man you're crazy okay let's go back to our calls here see if we can get back our friends who've been waiting quite patiently all right this call looks like it's coming from the 209 You've been waiting patiently. Can you hear me? Uh, welcome to the show. Yes, Brian. What's up? Who is this that I'm talking to, and where are you from? This is Daniel, and I'm from Manteca. Manteca represent. <laughs> I'm just playing around. So, um, please, I'd love to hear what would you rate the keynote, and what was the product that you loved the most? Uh, I would rate it a probably a seven. Okay. Okay. And seven. I, I think my favorite product is. Definitely the air tags. Mm, that's really that's really good here. I would love to hear kind of what what about the air tags specifically? I mean, we've been sitting on these things for so long, um, and for you to be impressed and love that, that's great. But I'm curious for you, what is it that stuck out for you? I'm always running late to work, man. If I and because <laughs> I'm looking for something, so if I can if I can pinpoint exactly where it is and save me five or ten minutes in the morning, <laughs> definitely worth it. You're, so wait, wait, wait. How does Air, you mean? Are you saying do you lose your keys all the time, and so Air Tags will help you find them? Is that is that what you're getting at? Yeah, my car keys, uh, my car keys, like a bag or something I need for work. It's, I'm always losing it, probably because I'm always running late. But you know. Well, maybe maybe you might need Air Tags and a time management app to help you. <laughs> I'm just suggesting, Brian. What do you friend. what do you think about the iPad though? Like with with iOS. With iPad OS, what, what is really significantly better than the iPad Air? Why, why would I purchase the iPad Pro besides the screen size for the most part versus the iPad Air? So, you know, I, I, this is kind of a thing that I've been talking about. Like, Apple made the iPad Pro 2018 too good. Now, as a tech fan, I, I didn't expect Apple to bring so much to the iPad Pro for this year. So, I'm attracted to it because of a combination of things, quite honestly. Using that iPad Pro as like my main uh, FaceTime for my family. I love the center stage, but that's not going to be the only reason why I would buy something. Um, the M1 is going to be amazing. And that, to me, the uh, combination of being able to utilize pretty much similar display results as a content creator, right? I think we have to put under the premise of as a content creator, going from Pro Display XDR potentially down the road for me to a, an iPad Pro makes a big difference. And I do want to see that mini display in person before I say I'm absolutely getting it, but every spec and feature they showed was appealing to me. Now, for most people, including myself, I use my iPad Pro to read comics, to web surf, and to video call and do email. Um, that all can be done just as effectively with an iPad Air, with an iPad Pro from two years ago. So because I tend to lean more towards you know the new tech, 
although I didn't upgrade last year, this was a compelling enough upgrade for me based on how I use my devices to, to get one. But I would say mo Apple probably doesn't want to hear, hear this from me, but the most consumers probably still don't need to. But again, you're right. Your biggest point, the larger display and if that Pro Liquid Retina XDR display is really so much more significant of a boost that you have to get it, mm -hmm. that those would be really the only reasons. You know, even Thunderbolt, that's more of a pro user feature where you could connect hard drives, faster data transfers, connect it to a display. That That's not a consumer feature per se, right? That most people aren't probably going to do right. that. So um, for me, it probably makes sense. And I would be the first to admit it probably doesn't make sense for most people. But I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that price gap between the Air and the and twelve point nine inch Pro is like insane. It makes it kind of makes it hard to justify it, especially if you're just like watching videos and checking emails and stuff like that. Well, you know, um, even from even in my video, I said if there's any iPad that someone has to consider right out of the gates before even looking at any other iPad, it's the current uh, at least twenty twenty edition iPad Air. Like that is going mm -hmm. to do. 95% of what 95% of people need and want in an iPad. It's that 5% of maybe creator, content creator slash pro users, want a mobile pro person that the iPad Pro really appeals to, or if you just want a larger screen. That's really the that's really the the, the distinction between those two. So I would still say iPad Air is most people's best bet. What real quick uh, before you kick me off? What are your <laughs> I love thoughts you. I'm on not trying to kick you off. The <laughs> um the bezels being white on the IMAX. Not a fan. I mean, I kind of said it during the keynote. It it's. I wish it was match the aluminum border. So, I mean, I'm sure people are gonna find ways to cover it up with some sort of a skin that really hate it. But I do have to see it in person. Um, I I, I get I'm guessing it's there because of for an accent reason. I think that. It's really interesting because on the when you look at the iMac from um, from the rear, it's really like really bold, and then on the front it's almost a little more muted, and I, I wonder if that's a deliberate decision because based on testing or what they saw, like it it can be almost screens that we're looking at are normally white. It just looked almost too punchy color wise because you can tell they muted the front, but then the back is where it's intense. So, um, and maybe that's the reason for the, for the white border. I think it would look weird with a black border around the front. And so I would have preferred the aluminum, but I still think they're really pretty. <laughs> they're really pretty. They'll give us the black bezel for twenty four ninety nine with the iMac Pro. You know this. Come on. We know how Apple does it. So <laughs> you know how it is. So thank you so much for calling in. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Been a fan since you were making videos in Hollywood, man. Man. I'm, I'm happy for your glow up. Hey, I, you know, I'm, it's it's a hustle. It's a it's a journey, and you know, people like you watching and supporting, and people contributing. I mean, that's how I keep doing this. So it it's I've learned a lot, and I think it's kind of to me, it's honestly exciting to be able to learn new things when maybe you not. I'm saying that you don't think you can, but kind of be forced in positions to learn a lot of new things. So um, it's it's been great. So thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Brian. Have a good day. All right, you too. Okay. I know people are like, I want to get in on this call. You know what? We're showing love to all of y'all. It is 1121. Um, I'm just going to bang through these calls, and we'll see what happens. Uh, chat room also, I got to show love. Thank you to Daisy Perez for $4.99. Before, I'm only going to mention this once um, during this post show, but if you want, I talked you know, about supporting my content. This is a quick thing. I'm not going to dwell on it, but patreon.com slash Brian Tong is how you can support my content. It starts at $2 per month. $5 is like a cup of coffee. We've got $10, $25, the $100 platinum level, but this gives you early access to my content, benefits at every level, and then also a completely ad-free version of my audio podcast. Plus, uh, we do like a week, a monthly private Zoom one-hour call. We just all hang out. So if you can and you'd love to, and I really appreciate it, it keeps me going, patreon.com slash Brian Tong is how you support this content, all right? Okay, let's keep on going here. It looks like... We have our friend Akash Kumar. Did I get you right from the 901? Oh, man. Skype is being a little you-know-what today. Okay. Give me a second, Akash. Uh, hold on. Stay there. I'm going to dial one more time. I'm just going to be honest. If the call software drops 
one more time today uh, after this. I'm just going to I'm going to end the show. I mean, this is not fair to all you guys and gals. It hasn't been like this before, but I guess it is today. Maybe maybe I'll just flood them lines. Okay, let's... Oh, wait. Thank you for calling Colin Studios host and call screener line. Please enter your show number and press pound. How many times are we going to listen to this? I mean, this is, look, this is live. This is raw. This is just what happens. But it's, we do it for each other, right? Yeah. Enter your six-digit PIN number. Can you guess my digit PIN number? It changes every time. Welcome, host. I do a show. You so. are now in the host room and can manage your callers from the call-in studio web interface. Okay, let's, let's all, before we get back to here, I want to show some love to our chat just to kind of, See what they've been saying, saying. Okay, white bezel is a throwback to the old colored IMAX, according to E E. Oh, it's according to U E U. Is that is that how I is that how I read your uh, screen name? We got the IMAX is pretty affordable, too thin. Why no Face ID and IMAX? iPad Pro 2021 fastest way to open your Facebook app. Bah ha ha. Gee, thanks Apple. Okay, we see you, Ray. We see you, Ray. <laughs> All right, let's go to our calls here. We're going to take Akash again one more time. Thanks for being patient. Akash from the 901, I feel like you're there now. Hey, Brian, what's up? What's up? Thank you so much for calling in and hanging out. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So, okay, uh, first of all, scale of 1 to 10, the Apple event, and then what was the thing you liked the most? And what was the thing that you maybe didn't like? Um, I, I mean, I liked everything. Uh, <laughs> I have no complaints. Um, I would say probably like an eight because like there were some things that were not like so exciting, like maybe like the Apple card and the podcast. Like, I don't think you need an announcement for a redesign <laughs> of the app. True, true, uh, true, true. That's my opinion. Um, but I was really, really, really blown away by, um, the IMAX, the new IMAX. They just look so beautiful and I just, I really love the colors and I was even more blown away by them putting the m1 chip in the ipad pro that's yeah. just like crazy to me the 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 line between computer and tablet is just kind of just like not there anymore and you know you make a great point there because as you know like i said earlier when we first started this um in the pre-show if they put something like an m1 in an ipad as you talk about the lines blurring you know, will we see new software hooks at WWDC, which is made to talk about the future of Apple software? I've got to imagine that we're going to see, start seeing even more cross-pollination of these platforms. Um, you know, we see how even macOS Big Sur has taken a lot of iOS's look and feel where there's aspects of it where I'm like, you should just be with the notification center and um, with the control center. Th those little controls are used to, like, touch your finger on it. So... You know, I'm really right. excited to see what WWDC has to set up because we're now just basically a month and a half away from that keynote. So we got all this momentum of all these products coming out. They said the second half of May, people, some people, not everyone, will, will be loaded with new hardware in the second half of May. And then you got that first week of June where they're going to talk about, okay, this is also what else you can do now. You know, Apple's mm. M1 chip has changed everything. Apple Silicon is changing everything. Right. I think we saw that at the keynote. And um, it's it's an exciting time if you're into this hardware. Right, yeah. Also, side note, I just want to say, I personally, at the beginning, was blown away by the, uh, the gun show that I was treated to, by, a la Tim Cook. <laughs> Yo, I'm <laughs> telling you. Kind of surprised. I think, I think, I I think he went in. Like, Yo, I think he went in and he's just like, He's doing his push-ups against the edge of like you know some like some bench out there. He was just like getting down in there just just to get just get puffy. But he he looked different. He looked different. He, that, that there's I think know. different. He looked, he looked like, different. He, he's starting to look like that guy from Restaurant Impossible on the uh, Food Network. <laughs> oh my gosh, is this Steve? Oh, what's his name? Oh my gosh, I don't want to get his name wrong. <laughs> That's a great call. That's a great call. Um, I'm gonna I need a I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna pull that up. It's like. Tim Cook or Restaurant Impossible? I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. He's getting there. He's getting there. That's good. All right. Hey, Akasha, thank you so much for calling. Really appreciate it, bro. That was fun. No, yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, Brian. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Okay. So let's right, bye. Let's, let's do this, everybody, because he, hey, he called it out. Um, Let's go Restaurant Impossible. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Blow this up. Oh, come on. Come on, Tong. Fine. We'll just go here. Tim Cook or nah? Tim Cook or nah? Let's. Tim Cook or nah? Tim Cook or nah? Oh, Tim Cook. Tim Cook. Yeah. Duh. Tim Cook or nah? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That is the that that made my day. That that's that's the best call of the day. Okay, we're gonna crank through. Okay, I'll stick around for about 15 more minutes. I know. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. Looks like my man Corbin is calling us back from the 850. Corbin, what's going on? Oh, what's why is the call software dying? Okay. Holy crap. Stay there, Corbin. One last call and i'm gonna be done with this hold on a sec annoying annoying thank you for calling colin studios host and call screener line please enter your show number and press pound so annoying y'all like we're trying to like we're trying to do a show here don't they know this has never happened this many times before though let's be real enter your six digit pin number okay two Oh, shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> Welcome, Man. host. You are now in the host room and can manage your callers from the call-in studio web interface. Okay. Hey, quick thing. Um, before we continue, got to give a shout-out to my man Richard Robinson for supporting 999 to the cause, the Super Chat. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, very generous, very thoughtful. Thanks for all of your support. Okay. Let's get into this call. We're going to go back to my man, Corbin, who's been waiting patiently 850 Corbin called the beginning of the show. He's coming back for more. Corbin, what's up? Oh, I know Corbin's here. I know you're here. I know you're here. Okay, fine. I'll put him back. Let's try one more. Give me a second. Okay. See if this one works. We're going to try our friend Ian Smith from the 619. Ian, did they get you right? Is that your name? No, they did me wrong, man. Ian, well, not you're not your name's not Ian. So then, what what is your actual name? Because the screen software was horrible. Please introduce yourself to it. Me. Is what, it is what it is. It's fine. My name is Ber Berean. What's your first name? Like, like Korean with a B. Oh, Berean, Berean or Varian? Yeah, Berean. Berean, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Um, what did you want to talk about? Uh, I mean, off the top, I got to just point out that it has been, it's not a, what, like a decade? It's been a decade we've had these Macs. Um, mm. And, you know, maybe it doesn't have an SD card. Maybe, you know, it's doing some funny stuff. Uh, I was getting my jokes off about it. You know, they put Mac safe in the iMac, whatever. But it is a, a refresh that I've you know, been dying to see, and this is what we're, we are going to see for the next generation. I wanted to get that off. I don't really have much to say about it, obviously. I, I mean, it's not for me. I appreciate it uh, existing. Um, I also think it would have been nice during a pandemic to have it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What really is irking me, though, is these iPads. And, like, WWDC is coming around the corner. True. I will give them the benefit of the doubt. Yep. Um, I've I've used the Magic Keyboard briefly. That is not a laughable thing. I really wanted to see like a um, uh, updated. I mean, you know, it's a heavy device. We can't do too much with it. But I wanted to see some improvements on that front. But I think my main read that I got out of this is that Apple is just being like comfortable in this position with this M1, where like we saw them do the breakup with Intel. We knew that was coming, but like. This M1 is really incredible. And I think the downside of that is that Apple might be flying a little bit too close to the sun. Uh, there, there's three M1 devices. Um, the iPad has a good camera, but the actual laptops and iMacs don't. But then there's this funny stuff going on. You update the hardware of the device that desperately needs uh, software. The people who buy iPad Pros instead of iPads Airs like you said, 95% of the people that do, 
those people do not want to watch anime on the iPad. People are doing work stuff. These are the people who are asking, <laughs> what is a computer? Like, the people who are asking, what is a computer, are the people who are buying the iPad Pro. And the people who are buying the iPad Pro or are looking at buying the iPad Pro um, need, need, like, need some help on the software side. Apple isn't doing much and they have it. And I think they might be doing a TikTok thing, which is why I brought up tick, um, WWDC, because two years ago, we got iPad OS, which was a huge deal. We got externals, uh, SSDs, and all that. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know how we should be looking at that, but I don't think Apple is doing everything they could be doing. Well, I will say this. Um, by no means am I defending them at all, but I think your point, and it's a point that I've made for... I guess four or five years is that we need to see software that actually utilizes the actual power that the iPad Pro has offered us. It they've never even come close, right? Now the other yeah. hand on this is that, and you're right, you're 100 percent right. But I I hear you, but I'd like beyond just doing the software and giving us more there. Look, I mean they they threw everything at this iPad Pro that they could have, and also you know you I also have to look at them in totality. And not say like, oh, they're resting on their laurels. They just they gave us the most jam packed product event that we've seen in a long time. And so I would say they've done anything but rest on their laurels, knowing that we still got potential iMac Pros, MacBook Pros coming this year. Obviously, new iPhones. Um, there's mm -hmm. potential new other products too. There's a lot that is still cooking for this year. It's not like they just, you know, this is where it's at. And WWDC is always another kind of indicator of where these products are going. You know, quite honestly, Apple Watch needs to get a boost. The past two years, it's kind of been pretty steady, and they've been selling bonkers. I mean, the Series 3 is, like, one of the top-selling watches still today because, you know, the general consumer, to our point of when we talk about iPad Air to iPad Pro, doesn't need it, all the things that the top line does. But um, I don't think they're getting lazy with the M1 by any means because we're going to start seeing the, the next evolution of it this year, and that's going to be another step. They're, to me... They're just creating a larger and larger gap in power and performance from the PC side. And the M1 is just the start of it. I mean, they're not, they don't need to all of a sudden give us an M1 one year and then give us an M2 the next. Like, they're already, they have such a huge performance, you know, um, and a Yeah, they're lead. good. Like, they're, they're good. And so I think maybe your concern is, oh, I don't want them to be lazy because they have this lead. And I don't think they're going to be. I think they're trying to like seek and destroy. And the iPad Pro, whether people need it or not, there is no product out there that can do what this new iPad Pro can. And so that I always love seeing when they go push it to the edge. Like the the Mac Pro, I would never buy a Mac Pro, but I thought it was amazing because they did it. And I want to see them do more things like that to show us that they're really serious about being like that leader in that space as much as they can be. And then kind of create that ideal product that maybe we all can't use but the fact that they're doing it tells us that they're keeping they're they're continuing to, sh to push forward so um i think they without a doubt ipad pro software does need to they just need to throw us a bone and use the power that it has but the hardware and the specs looks pretty impressive so like you i'll wait for wwdc before i kind of sign off on my final okay. verdict right yeah, most definitely. And I think that really is the thing at the end of the day. It's like we do have to acknowledge, like, they are doing things. It, it, spring loaded, this was definitely spring, spring loaded. Spring they, they went loaded, hit baby. after hit after hit. It was absolutely loaded. Okay. Um. All right. Well, I'm going to. Okay. Thanks so much for calling in. Really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging and coming back to the post show. And uh, we'll see you next time. I mean, June. June's around the corner. Come back, Marine. Bless, man. I'll see you, bro. All right. Thank you. For sure. I'll be there. All right. Next up, I'm going to try and get back. Uh, we'll give Corbin one more try. See if we got my friend Corbin from the 850. Corbin, are you there? Can you hear me? Man, we are just having technical difficulties with my friend Corbin. Okay. You know what it is, honestly, guys and gals? Skype decided to just stop on me again. So I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to just shut it down because it's just like, not a good product for you all, but again, I really appreciate everyone coming on board. We will have um, my videos coming up. Will be a recap and my raw reactions. I mean, you've seen some of it, but I'll have my recap video that will drop hopefully sometime today. It should drop today, and then look, we're gonna hopefully be able to get hands on review these products in the next couple of weeks, and then beyond that, WWDC 2021 is coming in June. June 7th through 11th. So we're going to be right back here 
I just want to say big thanks to all of you who have continued to come out, support the live stream. It is amazing. Uh, I'm grateful for it, and it's just fun that you keep on giving me a reason to come back and just kind of have a fun way that we can interact. So before we go, I do forget. I cannot um, dismiss this, but we talked about our big bingo card, and we had giveaways, right? We had the, the Cove portable speaker, and we had these three Razer cases for the iPhone. All you have to do is if you did get bingo five in a row on this card, you just have to tweet me at Brian Tong. You can send it as a DM. You can send it as a public tweet. What I will do is I will go through them. I basically collect them all, put them on a spreadsheet. And then from there, I just ra run a randomizer. And if your number falls on where this is, there's like a Google number generator, then you will win a prize. I will reach out and connect you and then also uh, kind of give you your props online because everyone wants a tweet that says you won. Like who, who doesn't want to win something? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there you go. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so sorry about the phone issues today, but hopefully that gets grinded out next time. But that's going to do it. This is BTZ's Apple Spring Load event. My God, it was loaded. It was loaded to the max. I, I, I was going to say bye to you without even looking at you because I was stuck on the bingo card. Who's the director here? Anybody? That would be me. 101. <laughs> all right. Take everybody. Be safe. Um, we'll see you on the Twitters, on the YouTube. Thanks again for all your support. Take care. Be safe. And uh, we will see you very soon live again June 7th, WWDC 21. Take care. Love you all. Thank you so much. All right.